Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Today, oh, <laughs> we got a special, special, special guest, Mr. Keith Huffnagel. What's up? <laughs> yes, dude. How are you, bro? I finally made it. So stoked to have you, dude. How's stoked it? to be here. Everything good? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you living now? There's, uh, I live out east in uh, Altadena. Altadena. Do you know it? No. I've heard of it. <laughs> I've heard of it. I never heard of it either, yeah. Isn't that like the milk company? Yes. Yeah. But it, I don't think it comes from Altadena. No. Oh, no. Okay. Right. <laughs> basically, Altadena is basically north of Pasadena, so we're just north of Old Town. A little bit of, of a drive out here, but bit. not bad. It was bright. <laughs> that's that's a worse when you're yeah, driving, driving to the sun? into the sun. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, Wind, windshield's a little dirty. You know, oh, out of out of washer fluid. Oh my that's God, scary. So my worse. car doesn't drive itself. You did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need upgrade. Yeah. You know. But wait, where's Huff? Huff wait, is in uh, downtown LA. Is it weird to say? Cause it's your name. I know, I mean, it, I'm like, how fuck? I'm like, 17 years in. Sure, so sure. It's kind of uh, become its own thing, right? But it's, I'm still there. It's bigger. It's, it's like bigger than you. It is. Right. It's, it's yeah. the weirdest thing ever. And, it's, <laughs> and I'm glad it's bigger than me. And I hope it lasts longer than me. Everything. There you go. Yeah. So Altadena to downtown. It's it, it's quite a little commute, you know? You go there and down there every day. Yeah, it's like no minutes? traffic, it's 20. 20. With traffic, it's 40. Okay. So it's not the worst thing. But you're the boss. You can kind of show up whenever. Yeah, I never, you know, you I can, never show up. You know, it's just... <laughs> no, just <laughs> no I, I show up. I actually enjoy going into work and oh, yeah? uh, being part of it, you mm-hmm. know? Right. With the ups and downs of it, you know? I'm, oh, yeah? I love it. It's a, it's a great place. I'm sure there's something to do every day. Whether it's good or bad, yeah. Right? There's basically a fire, you know. It's right. it's basically either things didn't get done, or mm-hmm. or there's a an issue with a copyright or trademark, oh, or yeah. who who knows, right? right? Or just production, someone something messed up, or there's always problems, and then there is things that are great, but we don't mm-hmm. really talk about the great things. We just like keep moving forward. <laughs> right. like, that was great. That got done. Keep going. Let's next go. thing. Right. Yeah, right. you know, it's more Let's about these problems. You're always fixing problems, and that's basically any business you're sure. always fixing a problem oh yeah, yeah. definitely you know you're trying to r- have it run smoother you're trying to have your website load faster whatever it, it is right every little thing yeah. helps yeah i mean a, w- a website <laughs> two seconds off of a load time is huge <laughs> it really <laughs> is you, know? you lost your customer yeah. Yeah. but i mean it must be and we'll talk about huff you and the business we'll we'll get into all that but it's interesting though because you guys have you, i mean you're a big company <laughs> like how do you even how do you even like deal with it on a daily basis? You know, I couldn't even imagine. It just became a big company that has all the levels of the the people that run a big company. Right. So it's kind of like I've car- carved out my part that is more in the creative or the skate part or okay. I'm more in the, I like the creative part. So yeah. that's more in my world of mm-hmm. being able to be with designers or being able to help um, guide a collaboration to life, you know, okay. or whatever it is. So mm-hmm. I'm more in that. And then I help out, you know, Tyler does all the skate stuff and I'll help him out with like decisions that need to be made or mm-hmm. we'll bounce riders back and forth or whatever it is. Okay. You select like which color weed socks are <laughs> going out that month or? I'm basic. I color all the weed you color socks. All the weed <laughs> socks. <laughs> right. Just got a box of crayons. <laughs> does it, it, now, I mean, I, people always must bring up the weed socks. Of course. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's part of our, uh, of our identity. Sure. Sure. I yeah. mean, that's what really, isn't that what kind of like thrusted you into it, this? It started some like popularity within the kids. Yeah. Like there was just a point where like, I think there's been points where like all the the youth, the, the young kids in schools have to have something, right? Sure. And for Huff, it was at one point the, the plant life sock. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we were already doing well. It was like the product was already doing well. That was just a boost to be like a little bit more awareness. And, right. it, and it's a, it was it brought in a lot more uh, revenue, which was helpful. Totally. So yeah. we were able to do more tours and we just really reinvested everything into the company to help build right. it. Right. And we still make them today and they still do well. They still do well. People still I want I mean, even the, though uh, probably every sock company makes 
weed socks to right? some degree it's yeah like, yeah it's very knocked off yeah. uh, <laughs> as you see i brought a pair of bootleg ones just yeah. for just for the crew h-u-f-f <laughs> i mean I you know they're a grocery but, sticker on too yeah. i know grocery 5.99 <laughs> wow it's fucking impulse buy but that's great uh, now so you guys are killing it you guys are doing well <laughs> i don't know wait we have our challenges, but we're sure. doing well. We we are surviving, and we are you know in the end we're we're building and we're supporting skateboarding, yeah. which is really my goal. Right, you know to make sure that we're always part of skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we're here supporting. Well, let's talk about um, Little Huff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Little Huff. You know, Little Huff. What age did you start skating? I really, really started when I was thirteen. Thirteen. But okay. I had I had a skateboard, so you know, like we had skateboards around. Um, where we just kind of kneeboarded and we mm-hmm. rolled up, r- rode on our stomach. We did all these things. I mean, I knocked my teeth out going down a hill on my stomach when I was 10 years old. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, where the neighborhood I grew up was um, Peter Cooper Stives, and they have these like hills between playgrounds, like la- layers okay. or levels. And uh, yeah, one time I went down on my stomach and I hit a crack at the bottom and just scraped oh. my face on the ground and, you know, Two front teeth. Just one. Oh, just one. One knocked in half, you know? <laughs> Damn. I mean, I've knocked, I've knocked my teeth out four times skateboarding what? or doing stupid things. They weren't all skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, ba- I'm basically like a hockey player. Right. You know? right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at one time, my biggest, I think I was probably like 16 years old and we were skating the spot in New York and it was a little waxy. I did a backside 360 ollie. When I landed, it just looped out and just, Ooh. you know, hands behind, yes. your, hands behind your body, smack your face. Oh, geez. You know, teeth gone. That's what Some that, of them were already fake, though. So yeah, you it just was, knocked you know, the fake one and a half gone. gone. Right. Just get the new two, get two new ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love the dentist. <laughs> I'm sure he loves you, too. Yep. I'm sure he loves you, too. Yeah. yeah, and insurance only covers the first one. They, they're they done with you after that. So 13 years old, and then uh, when did you really start, like, trying to learn tricks and do all that stuff? So, you know, I think because I had a skateboard around mm-hmm. me for so long that I already could push and stand, yeah. and I was already ollieing when I was 13. Okay, so it was yeah. like I went to the skate shop, and it was like my birthday, and it was like I want to get a real professional skateboard, you know. Mm-hmm. I got a Vision Jinx tight. Oh. And um, right away, you know, outside the skate shop, just started doing ollies, mm-hmm. you know, because I already was like, you, we were messing with other people's okay. boards and we was kind of around. But so you knew what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I knew what was going on. Right, but it was right. like from that day on, it was like I knew what I wanted to do. It was like this mm-hmm. was my passion, addiction, whatever you want to call it. It was like, that's all I want to do. Right. And I had my my friends in my neighborhood and it was like we had these like dead end streets where we could just skateboard all day long and you know we were trying to ollie boards and there was these little like rounded metal curbs that you could kind of slappy you know we were just we were just learning but we were like we had this area that was great for us that we could just skate oh wow cars didn't bother us people didn't bother us did you start venturing off into the city i mean you're still young but yeah i mean mean, you're 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 in it you grew up like in manhattan i grew up in manhattan on uh, 23rd and first so before that i was into uh bicycle riding or BMX or mm-hmm. freestyle. I was actually trying to do freestyle. I was doing BMX and riding around the city. So I already knew the city. Gotcha. You know, we were going down to the Brooklyn Banks on our bikes and like oh. riding the big bi- big banks. There used to be like this beaten up half pipe in between some old like abandoned buildings in Alphabet City that we would go down there and try to ride. Oh. We'd go out to Jersey City. There used to be these half pipes and try to ride. I mean, I was young and I was, you know, I was small. So be, it's harder when you lift up the bike totally. and all that. I actually went to Woodward for BMX camp before skateboarding was even involved in Woodward. It was just basically BMX and gymnastics. Yeah. I did the one in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we went there and we did uh, dirt track riding and then they had plexiglass quarter pipes. And they used to have people come do demonstrations on them. And they even had like roller skaters come and do demonstrations and all this shit. It was pretty cool. Like they would have us do like yoga classes in the morning or stretching. And then we go ride like five to 10 miles around the, the, the area of, uh, I don't even know what it's called. Amish country. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. It was fun. It was actually super fun for me. I got, I mean, I raced on my bike and I think I took like the second berm and just ate shit and got ran over. And then fucking, I was like, 
turned off. You were kind of over, <laughs> over it. <laughs> over it. <laughs> like, I want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I ride BMX now for fun. Oh, you do? Oh, really? Yeah. I go down to the uh, Whittier Narrows track. What kind it's, of bike do you have right now? I have a, a SE quad angle. Okay. 26 inch. Huh, I have no Sorry. idea. Yeah. I, don't ra- I don't actually race. No. But I just ride. Ride. Yeah. No getting I, Well, over. we had a party. So, like, we had a party there two years ago or a year ago. And um, we invited a lot of people. You guys didn't show up. Never got the invite. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes our email goes to spam. So yeah. I I didn't do the invites. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to someone. Put us on the list. But basically, a bunch of people came. A bunch of people, like, last minute canceled because they looked at their GPS. And they're like, it's an hour and a half from Hollywood to Whittier Narrows at 6 p.m. But you basically, can't plan any parties in L.A. around <laughs> at 7 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People should know better. <laughs> Get there early. Yeah. But a lot of people came out. And we did this race. And um, basically, I think we had about eight races with eight people on each race. And every single race, there was a slam. I'm sure. Yeah. And the guy, the guy that was like a, he was like a pro racer, and he's like, man, you guys are nuts. Every single race, someone eats shit so hard. And he was like, this is so tight. So what do you do? You just go, you cruise. I mean, if you're gonna go down there, you just cruise around there. You're not racing. You said so you're I just go, cruising yeah. around. Are I you go, jumping and stuff? No, and hell no, 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 hell no. I tried jumping once and fell. Oh, yeah. Fucking, I landed. I deck checked and fucking fell over. Oh shit! I can't. Yeah. Cl- I can't go fast enough to clear those. To clear Little it. Tabletop. The tabletops. Things, right? Yeah. I just roll. You just roll. It's, it's actually like to do one whole lap is exhausting. It's a good workout though. Yeah. It's a good like, workout. Yeah. Dude, my brother is a BMX friend. Like I, I just remember like I didn't see him for a while and all of a sudden he like he looked like a G.I. Joe f- finger. Oh, sure, like, yeah. just, totally just jacked. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be yeah. it's endurance. You yeah. gotta keep going. Did you enter in any of the races that were uh when you had your party? I or did. You, oh you did? I came in I think like third. Not and bad. then I raced uh Jake Anderson. We did a bet and I lost. Are you, are, I thought I was gonna take him, but you know, he's like 18 years old. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But it's your hometown try. It's like you're the <laughs> yeah. hometown hero right there, you know? I think I had to pay him a bike for that, but whatever. <laughs> oh, he got a bike out of me. You didn't fall though, though, right? No, I didn't fall. Right. Right. That's good. Yeah. 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 Fuck that. Yeah. I saw, I saw like, I think I was riding in this guy, Craig Mack, that, that works for us. He like flew off right next to me. Oh, and shit. I was like, fuck. I was just like, you know, cause you're just, you're all coming in from this thing and you're all getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if you're not in the right position, someone could just tap your t- tap your w- back wheel. Oh, whatever. Peace. Go down, yeah. yeah. So New York. So you were d- riding around New York City, but then you got into skating. So you were you doing the same thing on the on the board then, cruising around uh, the city? Yeah, I mean, we we basically started exploring. Yeah. Very fast. Like we knew where the banks were, so we'd go down there, and then we kind of go down um, South Street because basically how New York was, it was. It was a lot different than it was today. It was mm-hmm. like there was plazas everywhere. It was like we didn't even know what we had. You know, there was these places with banks and rails and it was like video games of today. And it's like we had all of that in New York and we had no clue right. what we had. Right. Even though there were security guards and they kick you out <clears throat> and all these things, but there were so many amazing spots that are gone today. Wow. And um but you know, it was the banks was the the hangout. It, it was, was like mm. If we weren't there, we would just pick other little local spots or there was always like a skate shop that had like just curbs in front or right. um, some some skate shops built like quarter pipes and, you know, little flat bars and things mm. like that. So wow. we had like, little, well, we had this place called ODs and they were up on like 38th and between like 10th and 11th over by the Javits Center. Mm. And basically there was a fire station there and a, and a skate shop. And the rent must have been so freaking cheap because there were so many crackheads. You basically would roll up and there was just like piles and piles of crack vials. It no was way. insane. Like we had to put, we had to sweep them out oh. because they were just getting in the way. Jesus. It was insane. I mean, it's a different time. It was of New course, York. Right. It was, yeah, you know, cool. heavy crack. It was like crazy shit. Yeah. There must have been a club around there or something or like, I don't even fucking know. Nighttime activities. You're there during the day sweeping off the (laughs) fucking (laughs) crackheads. I mean, that's just New York. New York's dirty. Right, right. You know, I mean, every time if you fell at the Brooklyn Banks, it was like you were filthy. Yeah. And then it'd be like, what are you going to do? It's like, go to fucking Burger King (laughs) and wipe yourself down. Like go in the bathroom and basically take a shower. 
And if you need like hydrogen peroxide or something, like go to the store and just buy some and like put it all oh, over you. Damn, dude. God, no that, Purell back then. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I just remember I would always be in Burger King, like washing myself off them. You know, surprised I don't have some weird fucking disease from it. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Who were you skating with back then? The original crew was like, I would say, I'm trying to remember who I met first. So, you know, it was like I met Keenan Milton. Mm -hmm. So me and him kind of uh, really just became really good friends and started kind of cruising around. And then there was like Hamilton Harris and then there was Mike Hernandez. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met, um, it was weird. I met Chris Keefe and his brother Jones Keefe in my neighborhood. And it was like, I was just skating this ledge and doing like 50, 50 stalls mm -hmm. and they just rolled up and they were like, you know, they were cool. And I was like, you guys want to skate around? I was like, I'll show you my neighborhood. And like, they were like, yeah. And like, we went like all, I took them all through my neighborhood. And there's a couple of sketchy zones and huh. where there's like this really low, Just steep keep rail. Pushing. <laughs> yeah, but there's this like really low, steep rail that you're like, you can kind of do it. You know, it's like in the early early stages of rails right. oh yeah and we would just bomb drop rails and oh. you know like shit like that and then i remember like it's kind of hood right there and okay. like you know people were starting to harass and then we just keep going keep oh, right. shit. so i you know i i connected with uh chris and john and mm -hmm. then from them it was like met geo estevez and peter bc because they were like oh, the, yeah. the queens dudes mm -hmm. and then um it was then it was like the long island dudes which was like ray Matei, buscemi mm -hmm. Gino, Ben Liver's Edge, oh, yeah. like this whole, wow, you know, man. there was a whole crew of like Long Island dudes. And then it was like more like if it was like the Bronx or like um, Washington Heights, like it was like, you know, Hernandez, um, Alex Corcoran. Um, there was like this whole crew of uh, different people, mm -hmm. you know, and wow. then there was Jersey dudes, too, you know, right. from like Fred Gall, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it was like. And even the Jersey, and even all the like um, Philadelphia dudes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know? Right. It was like Iola, like everyone would just come in and you just, it's just like you start meeting all these people. And, mm -hmm. you know, once, I don't know what year we met, I was probably like 16 when we met the Philly crew. And like Iola was like, yo, you can come stay at any time. You know, it was Roger Brown and Ricky Iola. Oh, wow. And they were like, we would just hop on the train, maybe four of us, and stay at their place and just go skate. Like, philly all night just huh. push bomb bomb car garages and those guys would just be smoking these huge like godfather blunts right. you know, like, <laughs> yeah, that was like yeah, that yeah. was like ricky shit was like you know the godfather blunts you know <laughs> and then there was all the fucking brooklyn people you know the ryan hickey oh, the okay. ivan right ivan perez um Man, there's so many people. I'm like, I'm going to forget someone and get, Don't forget Pang. get Jeff Pang. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. So I, I was, I, you know, Jeff Pang was older than me. So I always looked up to him. He was uh -huh. like, that dude can Ollie, you know, and I, can, I think I even bought some stickers off of him one time at like a contest or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is tight, though. So, I mean, you would just kind of randomly meet up with these dudes around the city, maybe the Brooklyn. But you, so you you're gotta, not all going to skating together at no, one time. No, there was it's, times oh, when was. we had like, mob deep crews mm. that were like 20 to 30 people because the thing is you meet up at the banks right. and we're all kind of getting along with each other and like we're like all right let's go skate world trade let's go skate down sea seaport or something mm. like that and it's like all of a sudden we just start skating and then all People of a sudden everyone fall. starts going it's like go <laughs> skate day yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's basically go skate day in a, in a small version <laughs> and i always remember hernandez being like no 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 you can't come yeah oh, right shit. he'd be like he regulates he's like nah you you can't come and like tell people to like sit back Damn. <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. That's funny. <laughs> wow wow dude I always felt bad for those dudes I was like fuck dude. poor Kelly <laughs> I definitely would have gotten kicked out for sure <laughs> yeah. but there was always these like little kids that were like so fucking good mm. and just would like rip for like a year or two years and then disappear disappear mm -hmm. disappear oh. like kids that were like you got girlfriends that or get caught up in the neighborhood sure, yeah, or fucking yeah, yeah. parents oh. move who fucking knows but i always remember there was always these couple of kids man just come and go come and go wow yeah. flash yeah. the pan yeah brooklyn banks is right do you remember like who was it did you were you the first one to ollie over the wall no who, who was the first <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could take that <laughs> uh fuck who was the you know uh, you got to fucking start asking questions because I don't know that. No, that, that has yeah. to be like, 
Because even if you think in the uh, the old PAL videos, was somebody like soy? Yeah, didn't they ollie the wall in like the one of the search for animal chin? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Banks wall was always something for us. It was always sure. like you got to like do something primitive. over the fuck. Yeah, you got to do something mm. over the wall. But when you really look at it, the bank to the wall, it's so fucking close to the wall. Oh, it is. That if you try a, a, any trick that actually doesn't pop straight up in like varials, mm-hmm. you're fucked. Yeah, you mm-hmm. can. You're going to hit the wall, hit right. the wall, hit the wall. Hmm. Unless you have such a quick pop. Right. And pop that early. You can do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That thing looked hard to skate. I know. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah. And the landing too. You'd oh, yeah, landing under the freaking... But if you hit the right spot, it just boosted you over though. Yeah. yeah. So I always liked I always liked the further part of the wall over the, the right of the lamppost mm-hmm. because it was a bigger bank and it would just boost you way higher. But to do anything besides like an Ollie or a one eighty was like hard because it was more of a straight mm-hmm. shot up. Mm-hmm. But then if you look at that uh that's that sequence of Vallely when he ollied the 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 wall with the, the fence. fence on top of it oh, and the fucking right. thing. thing. I think yeah. he knocked off yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Like that shit's insane. Damn. Beyond nuts. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like how much higher was the thing from the wall? Way higher. It's still it's there like today. Five, like, it's like fence and like that. It's huge. Yeah. And the the fucking fence is spiked and shit. Like yeah. it's, he knocked one off. And he That's knocked fucking... one off. He just powered through it. Damn, dude. So <laughs> doesn't surprise me for some reason. <laughs> but uh Yeah, I think well, someone told him it was like, impossible to do and he's like, Oh, I'll, I'll do it. Oh yeah. Jeez. I mean, there's so many amazing things that happened over the bank's wall oh, or happened yeah. across the banks mm-hmm. or you know, it's endless amount of, of things. And even the big banks like you know, I've, I've seen people do tricks on like the little ledge that's the wall ride ledge. Mm-hmm. You know, when you drop off that thing, the thing's like eight feet tall. Yeah. It's, and even just local, there's this kid Lamont, he used to crush it. Like he mm. just, there's tons of people in New York. Yeah. It's, it's insane. I'm sure you would see stuff every day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is though? We didn't know what we had. We yeah. didn't know, we didn't know that we were in like one of the best places to skate in the world seriously but we have some of the roughest weather in the world and the ground's rough there too Mm -hmm. and the the thing was that the industry was not there you know it was like it was it was shut then it was zoo york and then it was like some other small brands but it was never like you never really knew that that this was the shit yeah that's why i tell people like kids kids that i talk to now that are from new york i'm like enjoy it man this is like the best place to skate in the world, even though things are spots are taken away and all mm-hmm. these things, but like the energy that this place brings, yeah, the skate from skate. If you can skate all day from spot to spot and not have to get in the car yeah. or maybe get in a train if you have to, it's the best. but yeah. even a train yeah. though, you're still with your buddies. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 20 yeah. people can get on a train yeah. and you still have that vibe. Yeah, I mean, here it's like, okay, caravan, let's go. You're gonna drive, okay, I gotta yeah. follow yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you drop me a pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just takes away that whole. That's why I love like New York, Barcelona. Barcelona. It's the same way. It's, or, a, si- it's a similar vibe. If yeah. you think of Barcelona, London, New York, mm-hmm. even San Francisco, San Francisco yeah. at a smaller Boston too. Boston, yeah, yeah. 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 It's these like older cities yeah. that have this more dense skatable areas. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the the new, that crew called Gang Corp? Yeah, that's pretty sick. They they all skate around. It looks like dude, and those dudes are tight. They have such a great thing going. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to a bunch of those dudes. Oh, huh. sick. So they're tight. Well, speaking of like Shud and New York, how come you never really tried to do? Because you kind of went like West Coast. How come you never really tried to go like East Coast sponsors and stuff? Um, or maybe it just fell into place or something. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Like I basically. I moved to San Francisco in um, 1992. So I graduated high school. Actually, 92, 93, I moved out there. I I graduated high school in 92 and started college in 92, 93. So you were maybe 17, 18? I was 18. 18, okay. Before that, I was riding for, uh, or I was getting flow. So at first, like, it was, Keenan and I used to send uh, sponsor me tapes Mm. together. Like, we just decided... I don't know why. Package yeah. deal. Yeah. Package deal. <laughs> That's a good deal, I know, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like one of us wasn't good. We were, we were both like challenging each other and pushing each other. Sure, and then yeah. we'd make these videos that were like super fucking cool. So it's like, you got to take both of us. You can't take just one. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's actually And we weren't amazing. even thinking like that. It was just like, I remember, fuck it. It must've been like 89, 90. I was, I was skating, um, the Fuji building and I was I was gonna meet Keenan there and I showed up early and uh 
Shrugi was there and I was just skating, having fun. Like just, it's, it's a spot I skate all the time. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, and he was like thunder spitfire, right? Yeah. And he was like, I was skating oh. for toxic wheels and he was like, Hey man, send me your sponsor me tape. This is my, this is my information. Thunder and Spitfire. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> and Keenan, then, I got yeah, <laughs> to get another get tape they, going. They all left and I was like, yo, when they came, I was like, we need to send a tape. You know, it wasn't even like, I need to send a tape. Like, we need to send yeah. a tape. Oh, wow. Um, We're all getting sponsored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got sponsored by Thunder and Spitfire early, you know, and That's that was amazing. like the beginning. And then we started sending like things out to boards, you know, trying to get sponsored by a board company. And at that, th- at that time we loved H three, like H three was the shit. Life was the shit. We oh, sent right. a, we sent a, um, a sponsor me tape out to their, to them. And Dave Andrick hit me up and started sending us like really, really l- small packages. Okay. So it was like a, you know, maybe a board a month or a board every, every other month or something like that. Still a free board. Yeah. We were like, stoked, yeah. we were like fucking beyond stoked. Right. Yeah. I think we called them. He's, he was always like, you got to send more footage. Like, it was like nonstop. And we're like, you know, we're filming. We're fucking editing VHS to VHS right. to like putting it all together. Did they want raw footage or did they want like uh, we used to make version? We used to make these small edits that were super cool. Because I'm wondering if like they would trust like if they got the raw tapes, if they were, it, it ended up in like a H Street video know, or a right? Life video. Oh, or whatever, you know? <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it like you skating and him like just not like separated but just in the same video like sometimes uh, we'd mix it sometimes we just make actually little parts and you guys were all just filming each other yeah and then and then like we were making videos for other people you know we were making videos for like chris keith Mm -hmm. and mike hernandez you guys just pass the camera around yeah we'd all pass the camera around and then kind of like give them everyone's footage okay so you know it's early years of just filming i was i was like fully into filming 100 percent until the death lens came that was like that was like the death of me (laughs) why it was, it was, I couldn't get that. I couldn't figure out cause it's like, you turn it so fast and right. it was like done. I'm, I'm all about little shitty lenses and like okay. following you. <laughs> yeah. like, maybe it was just a time in my career where mm-hmm. I needed to focus more on skating. Sure. Yeah. That was probably part of it too. Yeah. But it just, I don't know. It just, I stopped using it. And, and then I didn't have the equipment anymore. You know, those, those things were like thousands of dollars. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, you know, let the filmer deal with that. Right, let the yeah. company, you know, it was like, sure. yeah, whatever. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you moved out to San Francisco for school. Yeah. Oh. I went to uh, San Francisco State. I went there, and this is in like the heart of Embarcadero. But how and was it leaving all your buddies behind? I mean, you literally The goal was going... for, they were all coming out. Oh. They were all going to okay. eventually come out. Because you guys out. knew <laughs> <laughs> California. Well, California in the, you know, we're looking at the magazines and the videos and California is where it's at. Sure. And really, when you went to Embarcadero in 1992, Ooh. that's where it was at. Yes. That was the mecca of skateboarding. It and was, you were already on fun then, right? I was on fun. Yeah. So I, I got to finish my H3, oh, I gotta you, finish please, my please, H3 yeah, story. Yeah, sorry. So basically, we were sending videos and mm. getting free product. And I even went out there, I think, in 1991 and visited me and Chris Keefe. We went on a trip. We did like this trip from uh, San Francisco. We flew out to San Francisco. And then took the Greyhound all the way down to San Diego and hit spots all the way. And mm. we kind of lined up people to stay with, or we were like, yo, you got anyone to stay with? And kind of like figured it out. Okay. And we went and stayed at the H Street house. And like, it was just the weirdest situation for us because it's like all these pros and all these people. And like, no one was really that nice to us. No. <laughs> no, we're young little rats. Who was the like, biggest dick? We were like, we're school W. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I remember Donger was cool. Uh, John Reeves was cool. He's the man. Was, he's the man. <laughs> JTMR. Uh, um, but we were like, yo, where's School W? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's all, and then we thought they were going to take us. They're like, just fucking skate down that way. I mean, you little kids, right? I know. You have all these kids. Go, just go out and do your thing. But, you know, it's like, we don't know where the fuck it is. We don't have a fucking phone and GPS tell us where right. it is. It's like we're just guides. skating and skating and skating looking for a school Like a yard. landmark or something yeah. that they told you. And then we, we did find it. So okay. that was cool. Yeah. And traveling on the Greyhound is tough. The Greyhound yeah. bumps right there too in downtown San Diego. We, I don't, we did not, we didn't stay that long in San Diego. We didn't love it. We, we were more like, we went to LA and we really liked LA. We had a mm. friend from New York, Cheebone, and he was letting us stay at his place. And then there was this other kid who I can't even forget. I can't even remember his hmm. name. And he was letting us stay. And he lived on, I remember he lived on La Brea and Wilshire, like really close to there. Okay. And we were like, yo, we want to go skate the, um, 
the sand gaps and the Santa Monica curves. And he was mm-hmm. like, all you got to do is skate straight down Wilshire. When you hit Santa Monica, go left and just take Santa Monica all the beat, all the way to the beach. And we we're like, cool. Do you, know far, <laughs> do you know how far that is? I don't yeah. know how far so it is. Fucking That's hella far. Holy shit. <laughs> but we're fucking New Yorkers and we can skate no problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we did it. You Four did it. Four hours later. Yeah. yeah. And you found the sand gaps. And we found spot after spot after spot after spot. And we fucking loved it. I mean, just on Wilshire and Santa Monica. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Wilshire alone is a skate it's park. Hell yeah. 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 And that was, you know, 91, I think. Mm. And, it, you know, we saw the courthouse. We skated the courthouse. Okay. We skated that, that uh, like, marble hip right before the 405 where Jason Lee had that, like, big backside yes. ollie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. That yes. shit was yeah. fucking cover. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there was just all these spots and... We had a great time, but we were definitely tired when we got to the beach and we took a bus back. I could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of going back, it's kind of uphill too. Yeah. So you, oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Back to H Street. Basically, sure. I, I called down there one day to get another package. Okay. And uh, Ron Allen picks up the phone and he's like, you know, he's been watching us and I think we were communicating a little bit with him and he was like, yo, we're leaving. We're going to go start this other brand up in San Francisco. You, you guys want to come with us? And we're like, yeah. Like, you know, we don't know. Not even a, yeah. <laughs> like we didn't we didn't really have it. We probably didn't have a chance with, H you know, Street. H Street. Or, okay. You know, it was kind of like they're dealing with all their shit. Right. And Ron and Jesse Newhouse and uh, JTMR are going up there. They started out of deluxe and they're mm-hmm. like, it's fun skateboards. And we were like, yeah, we're in, you know, like this is great. Yeah. So that was kind of like the start of that. Mm-hmm. And then like, I think Keenan and I or I think I was actually out there looking at colleges and stayed out there for the summer. And then got in a car with Ron, Jesse, John, and we drove across. Back to New York. Back to New York. Or maybe it was actually in the wintertime. Hmm. And then um, after that, Ron just turned me pro. Like, I was like, there's no, like rhyme or reason why it was just like no, I mean, no video part. Yeah, no <laughs> <nothing. laughs> yeah, 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 I turned pro so young and it's like, you know. What are, the, what are the rules to turn pro? I it's, mean, there is none. There's yeah. no rules. Right. It's, someone wants to put your name on a board in a company and you're a pro. If you're accepted or not, that comes to the community. That's true. Yeah. Yes. So. How, did, how was you accepted? I was accepted. I was really <laughs> nervous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you feel like you were ready or you oh, or, did, were you just kind of oblivious? Like, hey, this is okay, whatever. Yeah, turn me pro. I definitely felt like I wasn't ready no, for okay. it. But I think that's, you know. I guess it pushes you, right? You're like, fuck, yeah. I got to fucking really step my game up here and be right. a pro skater and right. like do more shit and prove myself to like, mm-hmm. I'm at Embarcadero and like, you know, I'm just kind of easing into this new scene. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I was probably six months there and I turned pro and like people were cool about it, but it was also like, I got to prove myself. Were you the first one out of your friends from New York to turn pro? Beyond like a pang, a pang was pro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So out of like the younger crew, I think so. I mean, they were probably hyped for you, man. Yeah. But then, like, I don't know when, like, Harold turned pro. Like, it just seemed like everyone just started turning pro at that point. You know, it was like we all kind of were getting into our early prime stages, and um, it just started happening for this whole younger crew. That's awesome. So you were on fun for, like, six months, turned you pro. Yeah. You're already living in SF. Were you getting along with all the Embarcadero dudes? Or yeah. Was it? I mean, okay. in the beginning, it was a challenge. It was like, for me, it's like, you know, I was a huge Mike Carroll fan. So mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm fanning out, right? Right, right. Or I'm just like, fuck, there's Mike Carroll. Like, he's fucking sick. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, yeah. There's Kelch. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, there's Kelch. Yeah. Yeah. There's Chico. <laughs> Chico. You know, there was like Carl Watson oh, was yeah. there. There was like. LeVar, mm-hmm. there was all this like younger EMB kids mm-hmm. that were kind of the like the rats that they were like they're they're harassing you for money, telling you to go buy them fucking Carl's Jr. <laughs> I remember Carl used to ask me for a dollar like every day. <laughs> Carl Watson, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I love Carl. Yeah. I was like, you don't even know my name. You know, some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> you know, like cause it was like in the early, early stages. Mm-hmm. And then um you know, you just kind of become friends with everyone as you, you just got to skate and kind of keep your head down for a while. And they all start just, you know, getting used to you. You right. know, it's like you're on their turf too. So it's like, you know, you got to prove yourself. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, sure. Yeah. And it was cool. And then like when they realized that there was this whole like other New York crew and we all started coming in, it mm-hmm. was like, we all mashed really well. And it was like, 
they were all cool to us and then they started coming to New York and everyone was cool to them. Okay. You know, and it started like this little East Coast, West Coast, yeah. like good vibe, you know? Yeah. Right. And um, it was it a was good relationship in that world, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, that they started having this connection and, and being able to go out to New York and hang out with people out there. And then how long after, because you left fun for, so, for yeah, real. I, le- I guess I left fun in 93 was when I left. 93, Early, okay. I don't even know when exactly. So you were on for how, like, I don't know, maybe a year, years. yeah. yeah. Okay. I think I had a few boards. Like, okay. I definitely remember, like, four or five boards on uh, on Fun. Mm. Um, maybe we were just releasing them really fast or whatever. Yeah. But we all went on this tour during the summer, and it was me, Keenan, Pupeki, Ron. And um, it was going great. And then... It wasn't going great. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was this like a U.S. tour? Yeah, it was like, a U.S. tour. Yeah. And you know, tours back then are just more difficult. Ooh. It's like you was know, it in the winter time. That one wasn't in the winter. Yeah. That was okay. a summer one. I realized like recently that like most skate companies don't do winter tours anymore. I've yeah. done winter tours and I've driven in snow to skate parks and done demos. <laughs> Yeah. And that is only for the youth, man. Right. right. <laughs> that is fucking harsh. Yeah, wow. Now you just got to fly in, fly out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Even going to a cold skate park is just Ooh. harsh. Yeah. So you know, worst. it's like, but if the kids are going to show up and you're going to, you know, the kids are going to respect and enjoy your entertainment, then sure. it's great. Yeah. Yeah, the summer was, it, it was going well. And mm. then, you know, I think the company was just having issues. You know, it was... It, it looked like it was growing and, you know, we all wanted more and mm. wanted more money and oh. blah, blah, blah. And, you know, who knows what the real deal was because it was, it was actually through Deluxe at that time. Right. And then Ron was the, the owner or I don't know how they structured the business at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we're, we're driving around in Ron's car. We're having some Ron issues of just like whatever is going on because he's older and he's dealing with everything. Right. And um, I, I don't even, I think we were in like Chicago or right outside of Chicago and there just became this whole fight. And uh, Pupeki and Keenan were like, we're out and just basically grabbed their shit and got on the flight and went back to LA. Oh wow. Damn. Or went just like that. To LA. Yeah, they were like, well, they were like, they talked to me and they were okay. just like, you know, I was like, I'm just gonna stick around for a bit and see what happens. But they're like, we quit, we're out. Did they have boards also? Yeah. They were, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure there's so many, you know, you talk to Becky, there's probably more details that I can't even right. remember, you know. Right. And, um, you know, it just fell apart. It was something that was going really cool. Mm. And it all fell apart. And then when I, I basically, I remember we got to Chicago and I told Ron I was, I was going to quit. And I flew home to, uh, to San Francisco. Okay. And I was just like not writing for anything just kind of trying to figure out and like Keenan and Gino and Hupeki were like, you'll come down to LA. There's this whole world thing. Like, you know, we'll, we'll get a spot for you down here somewhere. Is Ron just keep going on the tour? Is he so, just alone now? No. Like, <laughs> going through Chicago? <laughs> Maybe, okay. yeah. but he did, he did actually stop and he turned around and drove his van back. And okay. I don't know if he drove by himself oh or I know, um, fuck, I'm trying to remember his name. Must be devastating. Man. Maybe someone drove back with him or not. I think because there was a, there was a back to the city coming up or oh. something like that. Um, but basically, I quit yeah. and I stuck to it. And then um, you know, those guys are kind of like come to LA. They're mm. like you know, and I was like, I don't really want to live in LA. Mm. It was kind of like you kind of lived where your sponsors were at that time. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, I feel like kids still do that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was like just staying in SF and I was skating down some street in San Francisco and fucking Jim Thibo just rolls up and he's like, you need to come in and talk to me at the Lux. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And I think I lagged for like three days. I was just still in my own zone of just really? like, whatever. Okay. I had options on the table. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Somewhat. Not really. Well, LA Not stuff, really. world camp. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really right. have options, nor were, there, nor were I weighing options. Though. <laughs> I was just playing hard to get, I guess. Okay. I hey, it worked. It really worked. <laughs> So then I went in and I was skating with the real dudes, you know, I was skating mm-hmm. with Kelly Bird and Tommy Guerrero and Sluggo and Coco, um, mm. Shaman Dolly, you know, there was a whole crew. I was skating with them all the time. So I was already kind of like in with that crew, right. you know, so was, that was like, 
you go out and you'd film with them or take photos with them. And that, that was like the group that went out mm -hmm. and I was hanging out with them all the time. And I was like, they were a super fun crew to skate with. And I really enjoyed San Francisco it was like, it was a mini New York to me. And I really liked it. Yeah. And no, was, no video part yet. No huh? video part. No, there was, a, video. there was a fun video that is like very hard to watch. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Bad filming. <laughs> no, really oh. not good. Bad it's all it. like our old sponsor me tape oh. re-edited with new crappy film re-edited and mm. like overlaid like 800 times. Okay. With tracking, wrong, you know, bad. it's. It's a hard video. Oof. It could be way better. Gotcha. We got to find all the masters. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the fun video. So yeah, the fun video photos was and out. Mags, yeah, I had more like anything. That, I probably yeah. had a lot of photos and yeah. magazines. And that was a time where you, you basically, well, I was talking about this the other day. It's like you went out and skated and you basically went out to either take photos yep. or you went out to film. Yep. And you never really mixed them together. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we always went out and took photos. It was like we were with Morford all the time. He picked yeah. us up every day. And was like took us to spots, and we'd get shit every day. Right. And then it, and then it, it is, just yeah. and then he's right there at Slap and Thrasher, just handing off photos, and they're just ending up in every issue. Like, all of a sudden, you have wow. a photo in every issue. You have so an ad, sick. a photo, or something else. You know. Yeah. So That's you're amazing. you're getting more and more coverage. And those, I mean, photo that it was huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Photo in the mag, boom. Yeah. Everyone looked at a photo. Yeah. I mean, everyone looked at the magazines yep. and kind of like that was the Bible for that month. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah. So basically, I ended up going to Deluxe and just signing up, being like, "Yeah, I'm down. I want on the to spot, stay there. real yeah. Jim big fat down. contract. You know, the big whole fat thing. huge. <laughs> no lawyers. <laughs> just sign on the dotted line. No, there's no contract. <laughs> <laughs> but that's amazing, though. I mean, it must have felt good too. I mean, this is Jim Thebo. You know, he's coming out looking for you, finds you. Yeah. You go in there. I mean, yeah, that's special. It's special. Yeah. 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 For sure. And you've been with him over 20 plus years. Yeah, last year Crazy. was my 25th. And Ben ended up there too. Huh? And Liberty Edge ended up there as well. Yeah, oh, Ben that. came oh, there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Drake was there. Like there was Drake, a whole, there was yeah. a good, you know, Deluxe has gone through waves of people mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, they have an amazing team right now. They've always had really good teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, um, and people come and go as always. Sure. Um, but there was a, you know, that like real to real kind of crew, mm -hmm. you know, Salmon was there, like, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of good ones. Are you the OG on the squad? You're the OG? I'm the oldest on it. Well, it's me and Max Schaff. Max Schaff. We're like the, okay. the who got on first? You, you or Max? I don't know. No. Max, maybe, because he was right there. Oh, did he? Yeah, he was kind of okay. like. He was in the original real video. Yeah. Uh, so, so he's, he's the godfather, your next. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm his son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he was there. He's in Oakland. You know, he had his ramp and, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, Phelps was basically like, you know, his father, his dad, his yeah, dad yeah, to some degree. Yeah. His, his, he looked after him and Thebo was there and Mickey was there, you know, all those dudes. So when did you get on DC? Was that your first shoe sponsor? Yes. Well, I was getting shoes from multiple people. And then I think when did DC start? Like 90, 94, 90, 95, something like I think that. It was I think. 95. So I was in SF skating and I was getting like, you know, Don Brown was sending me shoes. I was mm. getting like Etnies and then Vans was sending me shoes. And I was just kind of like, take what you can get. Cause it was, sure. it was just like, you know, I was getting, you know, half cabs were like the shit then, you know, mm -hmm. it's like we were all wearing half cabs and we were started getting free Vans. I don't even know how we were getting free Vans, mm. but someone was sending them to the house. Okay. And uh, I was wearing Vans a lot and I was wearing Etnies. And then I think I was buying like, Remember those weird Adidas skate shoes that came out for a minute? Yeah. Oh, they had, yeah. Like the bigger, wider the thick three stripe stripes. On them? Yeah. yeah, I was, oh, yeah. I was like trading stuff at yeah. FTC for those, and I was skating in those. And Which then, kind of sick. yeah, and then DC started, and it was like I don't even remember how we got on, hmm. but it was like it started. You know, it was like the team was there, and then all of a sudden it was like the second team, which was you know myself, Scott Johnson. Kane Gale, mm -hmm. Moses at Conan, and who else? Carl Shipman. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And that became like the team under the team, you know? Gotcha. And and that was like the start of this new, new generation of stuff. Right. And it was like, you know, it was exciting because they were the only ones making different shoes. Mm -hmm. And they were experimenting and, and 
making really cool stuff. Right. And for us, that was fresh. It was new. It was like there was no longer the the classic Vans. It was these techie shoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was you know the '90s was popping, and it was tech, and it was it was baggy, and it was yeah. You know, you wanted to look good. Yeah, you wanted to look fresh. Yeah. It was hip hop, and all these things that happened, and it was like the old was almost gone at that point. Right. Um, it was still there heavily, but yeah, that's, I mean, if you look at why DC blew up like crazy, it was just something new and fresh in your face just for skateboarding. Yeah. 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 And it blew up all over the world. Right. And, and we were right there in the forefront of it and we were doing tours with them. And super tours. Super tours. <laughs> Dude. So we have the jerseys. Yeah, the jerseys, When you man. broke that out, I was like, oh my God, that's, that's, that's legendary. Legendary. That's. Well, you have the yeah. other jersey over there too, yeah. but that was the first that was super first tour. tour. Yeah. But that, that this one was the second one was, was more memorable. This is the one I remember. I don't even remember the first one really. You're too young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank Chris you. Just started <laughs> <laughs> no, but the second one was. I mean, it was memorable. It was one of the better. I mean, it was the the, the, yeah. the tour. It, it probably improved the second time. Sure. You know, it's, yeah. they learned from their mistakes, and okay. uh, but those tours were amazing. I mean. It was, they told us that they were going to do this thing. And then they went and ma- they went and like made jerseys. And mm-hmm. we were all like, you know, we were all stoked on it. Like, we were all like, yeah, we're going to put on these jerseys and be a team. <laughs> right, like, right. This whole thing, like, which is kind of unheard of these days. Just get a little jockey. It's a little jockey, sure. but there was something cool about it. It was mm-hmm. new and fresh. Oh, yeah. And we'd all fly. I think we all flew like business class, which was like a whole new level. You're like, fuck, I'm in business class. This <laughs> yeah. is like tight we're not back in coach right yeah you know and then we stayed in really nice hotels and it was like it was it was an upgrade 100 yeah and um when we got to these cities they kind of catered to us and they're like what do you want to skate and they'd either take us around the spots or like hey we're going to take you to the uh the skate park you're going to skate tomorrow Mm. we want you guys to like session it and get used to it so that you're fresh yeah warm up warm up Yeah. yeah So we'd go in there and everyone would skate and we'd film while like there's no crowd there and kind of just like oh. skate the spot and be mm-hmm. stoked. Mm-hmm. And the next day you roll in, you're like, I already got my shit down. Like, right. I don't have to like fall on, you know. Yeah. And basically, I remember, I think our first demo was in, it was like in London or somewhere. Switzerland, maybe it was Sweden somewhere. Okay. And I remember the guys announcing and like. He wants you to drop in when your name is called. <laughs> and like the crowd is like Street League. <laughs> yeah, the crowd is like screaming though. And like we go down and just Ali a pyramid and like the whole place is like erupts. Roaring. And yeah. you're like, holy fucking shit. And it's like it's like a new energy. You're like, I actually want to like do shit. Yeah. I want to like get yeah. this place like fucking roaring. Yeah. I would have been it, like, oh, all I gotta do is Ollie the Pyramid. <laughs> <It's great." laughs> and, and, and but everyone's doing it. It's right. like Deirdick's over there. Carol's over mm-hmm. there. Howard's over there. Like everyone is fucking just crushing it, doing yeah. like amazing tricks the whole time, you know. And it's the whole place just just in love, yeah. Crazy. You know, and it's like it's the best feeling to go to a place that people are happy, yeah, and actually excited to see you skate. Because like sometimes you go to a demo and everyone's bored as fucking hell. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> They've seen it all already. They're oh like, yeah, dude. <laughs> and is nowadays the the whole skate park is good. Yeah. yeah. So they've they've seen everything. Yeah. 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 So know? this was a time when it was like you almost felt like you were in the '80s with the rock stars and like shit's happening. And then you go out and you party and then you mm-hmm. you know then you get on the bus in the morning or you get on the flight and you do it over and right. you do it over and everywhere is as exciting or more. And then they throw these crazy parties for you and it's just like. Wow. Nonstop. It's like you're a, you're we're a mini rock star rock star at that point. Dude, totally. And plus you got the jerseys on, yeah. which adds to <laughs> Dude. No, but it adds to it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, wow, look at this. I mean, I remember watching it on videos and being like, This is fucking amazing. Yeah. Like, was I, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. You know? Was it a little Seriously. Cha- was it a little chaotic with like all you guys on one trip together? Like it was a big squad, dude. They they really organized it well. It was just mm-hmm. like you just had to show up in the morning. Yeah. yeah. You know, and sometimes we overslept or things like that, but it was, you know, we all had our, had each other's back and we got up and got out. Yeah. Right. Wow, you know? How long yeah. were those tours? I think they were a couple weeks. A couple weeks? Yeah. Okay. Maybe like two, three weeks. Mm. So, uh, were there only two of them? Was it the, uh, cause I don't remember one after, I, the one with I, that think, yeah. I think those were the two that I went on. Mm. I'm trying to think if there was more. Hmm. I don't really remember, man. I'm like, 
You have to look through the history book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember that one for sure. Issue thirty four and one. That there was, you, go. And you had to, you had the last trick in the segment, dude. The kick off over the was it a weird bike or something like that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Amsterdam, yeah. Yeah, got the links on. I think. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of boxers was he wearing? Oh, I don't know about that. I was, I this look. guy knows every four one one. Well, one one well that's the best four one one ever made. Oh, 30? It's, yeah, in my opinion, it's the best know. one. Is that your first time out of the country doing those DC super tours? No. Oh. They Deluxe started sending me out right away. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh. It was like instantly we were going to Japan, we were skating, we were going to Spain, mm-hmm. like um, London. Mm. We used to go to London a lot because there was a, a distributor out there that we would, okay. kinda, they would always take us around. Wow. Um, yeah, it was back then it was like you would do two man tours or three man tours, um, depending on just what company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of like, like little splinter teams. Yeah. Out there, yeah. You know, I'm just trying to remember who I'd go out there with. Um, just small. It was like, I mean, I remember me and Coco, me, they sent me and Coco Santiago out to Europe and I'm like. I'm a young kid (laughs) and Coco's like Coco's Coco. Right. And he's rad, but he's Coco. And, and we basically, I remember we were in London. He's like, let's go to Amsterdam. And I'm like, all right. Like, yeah. What are we going to do? He's like, we're going to get on the boat. We're going to go over there and we're going to skate. Okay. I was like, all right. So we get to Amsterdam and like, they drop us off in some weird spot. And we're like, where the fuck do we go? We we'll go to the red light district. Let's go to the red light district. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the skate spots are at. Right? Yeah. Right. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. We walk around. We're looking for a hotel. We go to like some fancy hotel there. It's too expensive for mm-hmm. us. It doesn't fit in our per diem. And Wait, is it just you two and that's it? That's it. There's not a team manager or nothing like no, that? No, no. We don't have team manager. We don't film or we don't anything. <laughs> We're just... Coco's a team manager. Oh, yeah, just yeah. for the demo. We're just skating. Yeah. So basically... We found this inn on the edge of uh, the the red light. It's called San Francisco Inn or something like that. And they had a bar and a pool table in the bottom of it. Oh. So we got a room there, which was like a, a black hole in the wall, which was fine. Okay. And we drank at the bar and played pool. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't skate. Didn't, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> we did skate. We finally, we got bikes and we rode so far out i don't even know where it was and we found this 12 foot metal ramp oh wow 12 foot vert ramp and we skated that i just kick turned sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we skated that and i think that was the only thing we skated and then i just remember coco being passed out the whole time oh yeah <laughs> and me walking around the red light district like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> i mean like that's, that's gnarly because you know, i didn't I mean, know there was, was like i knew there was more to amsterdam but right. i was just stuck in this little zone mm-hmm. i'm just like it's the most interesting part <laughs> it's interesting now when i go to Amsterdam, i don't even walk through that area right because right. it's like Walk in for if we're gonna go have like a, a funny night. Yeah, <laughs> funny night. That's a good way to call it. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna start saying that. Now. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have a funny night tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Raj is looking forward to those yeah. funny nights, man. I mean, Let's you know, go. with because we hang out with some locals and they never go in there. They're like, it's like yeah. tourist yeah, stuff. It, it's a yeah. tourist trap, right, right. you know. So and there's Amsterdam's beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. you ride bikes around. There's so much cool stuff yeah. and, below sea level. Amsterdam, yeah. crazy. Fun fact. <laughs> so, real is going well. DC super tours and everything. What happens with DC? Because you end up writing for DVS. So for me, you know, I was like, it was kind of like, oh, you know, it's it's is it time to be to get a pro shoe, right? I was like, and it's the thing. Everybody's it's like, yeah, getting it's like shoes. You're at you. You've gotten to a certain level. You you know, in your head, you kind of feel like you're getting to that point where mm-hmm. that's your, that's your next step. Yep. And, um, I talked to, and I was with my ex-wife at that time, Anne, and she's like, just hit up Ken and talk to him, you know? And it's like ballsy. They'll be like, go talk to someone and be like, give me a shoe or yeah. you know, something yeah, like yeah. that. It's weird. I didn't say, give me a shoe. I was like, is there, you know, I was like, is there any opportunity that I would get a shoe? I right. just basically wanted to know where you stood, where I stood. Okay. And, uh, you know, he basically told me no. 
No. He just said oh, basically damn. you're not going to get a shoe on DC. And, Did he give um, you a reason why? Or I don't remember there being a reason, but hmm. you know when you hear that, you're just like it's just like a, a bummer, right? You're just uh, like ah oh, fuck, yeah, like well, that's what I wanted. Right. You know, I wanted to do that. How about a colorway? You know, yeah. but that wasn't even on. He was just like you can stay at a good pay and be on the team. Mm. Um, so at that time, you know, like Keenan was at DVS, yep. and I knew Gavin and this whole thing, and they were like. They were already kind of like, come over here. They were like, okay. in my ear, like, come over here, we'll give you a shoe and all this mm. stuff. So I already had that kind of option on the table, and that's probably why I kind of even approached the situation. Right. DBS was huge. And DBS, DBS was, was, at that big. time, it You're was getting, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so I went for that. You right. know, I just said, hey, I have an opportunity here. I'm going to do that. I skated your shoe all the time. DBS, the big fat white one with the stripes going around the sides. So Remember like that? The wave kind yeah, of the thing. waves. Oh, yeah. 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 Love those shoes, bro. Yeah, Huge. Some, some kids been asking me on Instagram to bring it back. Oh yeah. And then someone at DVS emailed me and I need to e- email them back. I just lagged, but well, they want to reissue it. Yeah. That was a big old moon boot, bro. What do you, what do you say about that? Well, I'm in a different uh, place and I'm, I'm not really <laughs> at that level to have a pro shoe so probably, <laughs> probably not but the reissues are big right now yeah. i know but it's also i would love to have a pair of those do you have any do you have all your old shoes i may have a pair of those somewhere but i i really don't keep too many shoes just mm. be the reason i don't keep a lot of that stuff is because they fall apart over time yeah the and rubber disintegrates yeah every, they're just yeah. what are you what are you holding on to yeah what memory are you holding? They take up to? a lot of space too. They do take up a lot of space. Yeah. Colorways. I, I have like, I have like on 100 storage units full of shoes. <laughs> 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 things are expensive too. Those are like a couple hundred bucks a month for one. <laughs> no, I have, I do have stuff, yeah. but I don't, I like, at one point in my life, I did less than all my shoe inventory. Oh, you did. I still have stuff, yeah. but I don't have what I had. I, I think as you get older too, it's like just what, what's what's more meaningful to me? What's yeah. the most meaningful graphics and this and that, you know? And it's funny because shoes are like stocks, you know, they like, they're really, really valuable at one time mm. and then they're really not valuable at another time. Right. And don't know why, but that's... That's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. They, have, they have apps for that shit now. It's insane yeah <laughs> i don't think my audio hamilton's on any of those apps but <laughs> so how many shoes did you actually have with dvs the the big white ones with the wave was the first one that was right? first it was the first and then there was a second and i think that was like more of like a mid top with a strap mid-top with a strap okay oh yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of that. air forcey <laughs> yeah. dunky air forcey okay. and then the third and then i had a running shoe too so I was always trying to like mash in like running and skating mm. or like, how can you make a running shoe skatable, which right. is not really possible. <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but yeah. it's probably not the best choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was another one too. Yeah. I feel like I had like, I feel like I had like three or four. Three or four? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, then, and then I decided to, start a shoe company right <laughs> i mean but those must have been great checks though because dvs was i mean they they, they, they were, were killing it they, they were popping. yeah so i think my biggest i did really good on my first shoe yeah that was like an actual like really good check okay i was like super stoked right and then everything was just like okay hmm. and then my last shoe so i think whatever it was the four or five four it was probably four okay that one did really well because they like extended to all these other categories or colorways or girls Mm -hmm. and i was actually going to make a decent amount of money Mm -hmm. and i had to uh quit and turn it down and they changed it into a different name because you were starting your own yeah maybe you could have said let me you could have just waited on yeah let me just wait to start (laughs) (laughs) let me me just get this shoe out there and then i think they were bummed but you know what it was an opportunity for me to start my own thing mm-hmm. and i also heard that they were bummed that i didn't ask them to to, to start it oh, to do it with them but they didn't ask me either that's yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute you opened up a store first though. yeah you had a, a store huff first yeah that, so that kind of was a kind of a boutique sold yeah the store shoes. was happening and we opened it in 2002 2002 and i quit dvs in 2009 okay when was skate more what, 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 what year was that eight maybe 2008 yeah or seven so or six i don't even know I, was, I don't okay. know so you quit I, a couple oh, okay i quit 
a couple years after skateboard. Maybe, yeah, because I was pretty into it in skateboard. So that might have been earlier, like mm. six. Yeah, I think it was around 2006, 2006 or seven. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Huff started doing apparel first, right? Yeah, we were I mean, a full, full, full apparel. apparel company. Um, and we were good with apparel. Like it was yeah. going smoothly and everything was good. And mm-hmm. I, um, I don't know, I kind of watched DC and I watched all these companies kind of come up. Mm hmm. And in my head, I kind of thought it would be a good move to like build a footwear company. And I thought by watching DC that it was way easier than it was. Right. You know, um, in reality, it's an extremely difficult category to be in. A lot of money, too. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, I partnered with this guy, Jay Beck, who used to be part of DC or, or helped DC get uh, production made and all these things. Oh. Um and, you know, we had good factory relations. We were able to, like, build product and, you know, deliver now, pay later. You, oh, know, okay. you know, we yeah. had, we had like, really good terms, good, good terms yeah. that, like, we are able to survive and build this company. And that was really through Jay Beck's co- uh, connections. Okay. And, um, you know, it was what it was. It was just, yeah. like, we were building and we were able to sell and pay later and, and build inventory and and you know, yeah, kind of have a really nice credit line. Mm-hmm. And uh, that went on for years. Okay. And were you using the money from Huff to, to finance the shoes and everything? Yeah, was it, everything it was, was all, being reinvested? It was, in... it was all one pot. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. great, though. Yeah. That's great. So that you didn't have to like pull more money in. Well, it. we were struggling. I mean, we really had a, the 2008 to 2010 was a really uh, down cycle for Huff. Oh. We, you know, it was a recession oh, at that point, that's right. and we were, we were building a company and never experienced anything like that. Mm. So we weren't really ready for it, and we just didn't really change our ways. Hmm. So we were, we just started to get a little bit in debt and a little bit more in debt, and then we're buying all this product from other companies and getting in debt to them, and you know, it's a struggle because you're just trying to juggle, and then we go to get a bank loan, and they're like, "Sorry." scary yeah so yeah. we we were actually on the verge of potentially going out of business damn yeah but pulled through we pulled through we just fought and we fought and we kept on just hustling and we got a couple we did actually end up getting a couple of bank loans oh, okay um you know with the new with a new partner he came in he was able to help us get line of credits mm-hmm. i mean they always have a personal guarantee attached to it which isn't the best but it's also scary yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's just> damn <laughs> um i've signed a lot of personal guarantees oh, wow that, you know it's i mean as the companies get bigger and bigger and bigger it's harder and harder yeah i don't it's, need to sign it now but it's sure but it's more still. on the company but um yeah you can lose everything mm-hmm. that's insane <laughs> No more Alta Vista. I mean, Alta Dina. I don't Alta Vista. Sorry, like, what? Al- Alta yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Alta something. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that's nuts, man. That's crazy. But you pulled through, and then you decided, to, and then the shoes, the shoes, I felt like popped off. I thought they. I felt like we were doing really, good for a minute. Really you know, doing well. People were backing it. Yeah. Um, it was it was going well. I mean, I mm-hmm. think we had production issues and quality issues oh, and yeah. all, pricing issues. You know, you got to think like. You're making a similar shoe to a Vans, and you're double the price. Yes, uh, you know, and with smaller distribution, smaller volume, and all that, that you're you're getting squeezed a little bit. Mm. But people did support. Um, we definitely had a lot of people that supported, and they they're trying to support. They want to support, right? And you know, when they start getting stuck with inventory or things like that, then they start ordering less, it's, and then they have one that hits, and they order more, and it's like it's just a it's a juggle. It yeah. is. You know, and yeah. then you have other things on top of you. You have all these other bigger companies like that are doing well and mm-hmm. you know, they're pushing on top too and you know, it's it's a very tough business. It is. Yeah. Um, but we had some hits and we had some misses or we had, you know, it's it's just tough. Yeah. Right. Um and then the thing is you have to be so on point. Your quality has to be perfect. You can't have any issues out in the market. You know, you can't have souls falling off mm-hmm. you can't you know and these yeah. things happen these things even happen to the big guys you sure. know? oh yeah it, yeah it just it's happened just, to nike in the with the dude on the basketball court yeah, yeah. things happen you know you don't know where that thing was you don't know who put it together and and it happens yeah you know things blow out or some reason that this thing just keeps the soul part keeps falling off or the taping is falling off and you got to think you're putting 
shoes into the most extreme um, conditions, yeah. skateboarding. Yeah. yeah. You know, and they get floppy, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes they're perfect and they work great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, for us, we're, we have these factories. It's like you have a, a one person who's kind of managing all the production and then they ship it out to multiple different factories. So sometimes you don't get the same factories that made the shoes before. Interesting. Oh, or you get yeah, another person. Yeah. They're using the same molds, but maybe they don't. Their technique is different. Their technique is yeah. different. They don't do it at the same temperature or this or that. And then all of a sudden you can get different quality issues all the way through. It's almost like you're getting a completely different shoe. Yeah. Yeah. So this, that's why the shoe world is so hard because we're we're at such a small level that mm. we don't we're not in the same factory every single okay. time. People don't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I would think crazy. that you would because you always do hear about a shoe company switching factories, yeah. but it's kind of after a long time and this yeah. and that. And so Only I didn't realize it was like a constant. If you're at a big level, you'll stay in the same you'll stay factory because okay. yeah. you have to have a certain quality, and there's these quality checks to go through and all this stuff. Mm. And you know the thing is. When you're making apparel or footwear, you have to set up a line. And setting up a line is tuning up machines all day long or, or for a couple of days oh, wow. to make sure it's going to do these cuts mm. and do these, you know, do everything one way. So for a factory to set up a, a production line, it needs to take them time to do that. So they're spending money to set this up. Yeah. So if you're not running for a certain amount of time, they're not happy and they could be losing money yeah. or they'll charge you money. Or another money. company comes in with a bigger run. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they want to support that company because their their line is running longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you got to think of like a, a Vans is a prime example. It's like an authentic or something like that. The line is probably hundreds of thousands of pairs. Sure. And they're just pushing and pushing and pushing and they only have to set up that they're machine They're all built on once. the same sole too. Right. Yeah. So... Instead of changing last and doing all these things, I mean, it's the same thing in apparel. You know, if you want to do a certain setup and you only want to make a hundred, it's going to cost you more. If you want to do a hundred thousand, it's going to be way less. Right. So. Wow. So no more footwear at the end of the year. Yes. You guys are closing the footwear division down. Yes. How do you feel about that? I am bummed. Yeah. Happy. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mixed it, it's emotion. Yeah. It's a mixed emotion yeah. because it's like. It's kind of cool headache. to go out like, you know, with a little bit of buzz mm -hmm. instead of failing and having it drain the company down. Right. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we made a mistake and maybe it could have been this huge thing. But, you know, when you really analyze it, it's it's a smart move for right. the company. Yeah. Um, you know, and we want to we have plans to grow and be this strong, strong company. And, um, you know, maybe we'll do shoes with other people. Maybe we'll partner with other people to do some shoes. There you go. You know, or whatever. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. And we want to support other people too. We want to, you know, put some other shoes in our stores that if we're, if they can put them in there and keep giving back to mm -hmm. the community of skateboarding, really, yeah. you know, so, but we're smarter now, you know, we don't, we don't need, we don't need it as much and we don't want to be owned by it. We want to design our line and have things come in and inject and be, a part of the collection. Right. Mm -hmm. And you want to, f I feel like if you focus on one thing, you're going to do that one thing really well. Yeah. You know, if mm -hmm. you start doing 10 things that the, the clothing will suffer, different divisions will, you know, not your focus is everywhere yeah. instead of one place. Yeah. Well, we had it broken up in the company, but you know, yeah, but still, you know it's, what I mean? it's hard. It's hard. I mean, did you ever think when you open your first shop that you would have this massive company, you know, I think I always did dream of it being at a certain size, but then where it's at now is way beyond, beyond what it. I ever thought, you right. know, and, and it's taken many different turns. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy where I'm happy where it's at. And I'm really happy of the, the future goals of where we're going. Yes. You know, so. Yes. But it's yeah, it's a roller coaster ride. I could imagine. But, you know, we've yeah, we've gone through different partnerships and it's it's always a. Uh, it's like. Changing partners is almost like being in a new relationship at times mm -hmm. and you all have to agree and, you know, you have to communicate and agree and get along and, and have the same vision for the company. Mm -hmm. Well, I can imagine, cause you've done like collabs with like Budweiser yeah. and stuff like that. Is that hard to work with big, brand, big, huge, I mean, they're a massive brand, you know, and I'm sure they want everything exactly on brand and they want to, I'm maybe not micromanage, but really have their input is it is it hard to deal with big, so, huge brands like that i didn't, like I didn't personally deal with it oh no no okay 
You weren't I, talking to Mr. Weiser <laughs> on the phone? You someone in our company was dealing with okay. all the communication, and there are all these rules you have to follow. Right. And there's all these checkpoints, and then they have to see the product, and they have to approve the product. And gotcha. There's a design process. There's basically, from design to ending, there's an approval process. Okay. And... My one thing was, you know, we wanted to inject a skateboard in there. So I was like, let's make like a, a bottle board, like a, you know, like, you know, the funny, like shape boards. Yeah, and, of course. And the, the Budweiser bottle board got denied. Really? Yeah. Huh. But the, the popsicle Budweiser was approved. So it's, it just comes down to like, who's on, on the other end, who's making the decisions. Yeah. Because there's no reason to not have a, a bottle board except for. That per the maybe that group of people were not into it. Huh. We still made cool stuff and it did well, right? You know, and we did get to do things that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they let us do Huffweiser and all these things, which we thought we were going to get denied on. Yeah, and they approved it. So it's like, why approve that but you deny that? You know, and it's yeah. like you it's this know. weird balance yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so when you do like a collab with like the Fifi company, does somebody test out all this? <laughs> does somebody make sure that they're the quality control? You Fifi? know, there's yeah. Oh, the free, the, uh, the pocket pussies and Tanga. Yeah, the Tanga. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Tangas are pre-approved. Okay, they're pre <laughs> We gotcha. all, all we do is uh wrap it differently <laughs> we, skin, we skin the outside differently <laughs> our said fuck it uh, which is a great i mean bro the yeah. fuck it thing is huge man <laughs> yeah. i mean in general you guys do a whole line of we use hats. fuck it a lot yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's it's part of our uh our dna right what about but it fits perfectly with the wait pussy. wait what Wait, what? what? What's up with that? I always see you guys so, hashtagging that honestly wait what just became you know it was kind of like uh Gottwig, Matt Gottwig and Martin Regal, like they're up from the Seattle area. And Gottwig just always used to say what? Like every time you'd say something, he'd be like, what? <laughs> and and then like, it was like we were on tours and it was just like anything that came out of your mouth, it was what? What did you say? What? Did you, what? <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, this fucking kid is always just what? So it just became a joke. And then we just started saying, wait, what? And wait, then I what? just started putting it on my Instagram. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, wait, what Wednesday, whatever. <laughs> wait, <you know>? what? <laughs> but it's funny because I watch TV all the time and there's always these like, wait, what? Uh -huh. And you're yeah. like, you know, that was funny. Like you just yeah. need to get all the clips and just be like, wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. I want to jump back real with the FTC video. Yeah. That was my first part. That was the first part. Yeah. yeah. Major part. Yeah. Fun was your first, but. Didn't really that was count. my second part. Sorry. So, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But the FTC now. Um, great video, by the way. Great video by Aaron Meza. Man. Yeah, hell yeah. The song. What you? He didn't. Meza didn't want to use the song, right? At first. This is correct. <laughs> well, okay. I've I've to talked to him a few times because I keep saying Meza denied the song and and you know it's it was a hit song and all these things and he's like. He's like, I didn't deny it. I just heard the word reggae. And I was like, you're not putting oh, a reggae like song in there. Because oh. he didn't know the song. Right. But when he did hear the song, he was into it. Or I was like, this needs to be my song. Yes. Because we were like, you know, I, I'm heavy. I was really deep into reggae music mm -hmm, at that time. Mm -hmm. and, and I still love reggae music. Like, it's like, it's always part of my cycle okay. of music. And um, I had some compilations or something and that song is alicia and donna uptown top ranking yeah and we used to just play it in the car and jam around oh. and i remember jones keith telling me he's going to use it for a video part and i was like no way i'm using that i'm going to use it first first to market i was, like I, was like, like I call that right you can't have that <laughs> <laughs> and it was the time for this video that I was filming mm. and I was bombing hills and ollieing and doing these things and I was like it's such a perfect song of like the tempo for like what what's happening in and the video and it's got the pop reference yeah. in it too yeah. did you know that, did you make that no relation? I really just it, no. it was just the the tempo the vibe and the, 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 yeah. the whole thing was okay. like was right and mm. you kind of know it I mean the video part is like half your video part is like picking your song yep. yeah yeah 
for sure and to have a song that sticks in people's heads Mm -hmm. and they sing when they go skateboarding or whatever and you know that song became really really popular in like later like 10 years later okay but at that time it was it was out there because it was made in the 70s or whatever and it was but we just chose that song and it was a hit and stuck in people's heads so that helps for people to watch your video over oh, yeah. and over. Oh, yeah, over. for totally. sure. If I heard that song pop on the radio, I would know. Yeah. I mean, I would just think of Huff. Did you choose all your songs that you skated to? Almost. Yeah. I think so. I, I always kind of like, um, I go to friends that are like really deep into music. Mm-hmm. So like. Who chose Heart? I honestly think Anne Freeman, my ex-wife, did. Right. That was a rad choice. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one. I think she picked that one. Mm. And then Hani El Khatib's helped me pick some stuff in Damon Way, which was like the nerves. Um, oh. the the blondie. No, it's not blondie. It's a blondie song. Um, which video? Was it a cover? Yeah. Well, no, the blondie covered the the nerves. All right. Hanging on the telephone. What video part was that? That, that was uh, one of my last ones. I don't even know. But then mm-hmm. what? I, then I did Ratatatat. I think Hani helped me pick Ratatatat for uh, the DBS video. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and then, like, I picked music, and like, we've tried to get rights, and just you know, you go through the battles, and you can't get it, or it's way too much money. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Um, or sometimes bands are just in wars, and you can't even, you'll yeah. never get it. Because uh-huh. one band member doesn't like the other. Yep. Yep. They don't want to make money, or yeah. sometimes it's just you know, you only want to give them. It's like, what can a skate company afford to pay for a song? Like truly. Yeah. It's, yeah. Unless you're unless you're a big big company, it's mm-hmm. like a normal skate company can pay like five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for a song. Yeah, if that's and then, and then they're like coming it. in with like a hundred thousand dollars, and you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we're not going to make close to that. Yeah. On this video. We're just going like, to barge it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the old school way where you just put the the title at the end of the um, the video. Exactly. And, but that's how we all found music through skate videos by mm-hmm. looking at the credits and yeah. then going and buying the. Oh, yeah. the song so it actually worked when the internet wasn't here if i couldn't find the song i would listen to the tape recording of it off the skate video yeah <laughs> what is all this click one. clacking in your fucking song that you're playing you know it's a skate <laughs> oh, sound <yeah. laughs> dylan reader when he came at because well, you guys did his shoe it was yeah. kind of like the dress shoe yep. and stuff um well how'd you feel about that shoe you know, when you first saw it and first kind of knew, because it was had it on Gravis, though. That's true. That's true. Dylan's shoes were versions of his old shoes. Yes. And working with Dylan was like, I don't know, he was something special. He oh, knew yeah. exactly what he wanted. Mm-hmm. He was able to communicate that to the designer and execute. Right. And I, I haven't ran into too many people like him that could do that process Mm. and have an opinion and really push it all the way through. Right. And he had it and, and he could do it from beginning to start to selling to ending. And he was, he was a true professional. Um, he knew what, he knew what he was there to do. Right. You know, and he was like, he knew the style he wanted. He knew how to promote it. He knew everything. Okay. So it was just like, he had it. Yeah. And um, and then even when he did demos, he was like he knew how to be professional. He knew how to put on a show. Mm-hmm. He knew how to end the show. He knew how to hang out with the girls after the show. Yeah. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Oh, yeah. And it was like true professional. Like right. you would never know. You would think he's like, oh, he's just like fucking off. Like he doesn't care. But sure. if you really watched him, he was a true professional. He got it. Yeah. 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 He knew how it all. And he he told me he was like, I will get all this done. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh, that's rad. You know, you're like. That's what you want to hear from a team. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> how did how did you end up getting like so? Him and Austin got on the team the same time, right? Yes. How did that happen? So basically, like I kept on hitting up uh, Dylan, like, "What's your plan?" Because he wasn't writing for anyone. It was it was like, Gravis was done mm-hmm. or just Japan only at that point. And he was like, kind of like, getting shoes from Vans and talking to people, and then like. I kept on just hitting him up lightly, like once in a while, like, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, I want to actually talk to you, you know? And I was like, 
so we basically we gave him an offer that was like a real professional rider. We were investing. Uh-huh. We were like, fuck it, we're gonna invest in Dylan. We're gonna invest in Dylan and being in Huff and like pay him correctly and do everything the right way. And he went for it. He was like, I, I, and I basically, you know, I, I just said, we're not that corporate company. We don't need you to do all these things. We mm-hmm. just need you to, to represent the brand, do your own thing. You don't need to wear a logo on your t-shirt. You can wear a white t-shirt, mm-hmm. you know, like we don't, we don't require you to be this head to toe kind of guy. We want you to be you and express yourself in your way. And he, that he was down for it. And he was, it was his idea to bring Austin and they were like best buds. And I was like, Austin's amazing too. Hell yeah. You know, and it was like yeah. a power team, you know, and it was like, let's do it. And that was we, a power we, move, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys yeah. did that. Yeah. And we treated them equal and we just fucking, you know, did it. Really- and, you know, and, sh- you know, shit fell apart. You know, just, you know, Dylan getting fucking, uh, cancer and all that mm-hmm. shit and just fucking whack you know it's yeah. just fucking it's super fucking sad because he was what is he 28 yeah. he got yeah. at 26 and died at 28 it's like Crazy. the fucking yeah he had a, this huge life in front of him yeah yeah so it's just sad it's you know it's like fucking but we were there we sat by his side and we fucking helped and we tried and mm-hmm. you know what we don't know shit about any of that it's like right. we just were there to fucking be there mm-hmm. and you also did some shoes afterwards to uh, benefit uh, yeah so leukemia and stuff like yeah that, we right? we help out as much as we can and um you know we have we have dana his mom involved mm-hmm. in anything we do um so this will be we have his shoe coming out on his birthday that'll be his last shoe okay and then we have probably a couple other like dylan folk shoes that are like the last oh, yeah. and that's it like wow. we are not going to make a dylan shoe again wow like wow, that's man. it we yeah. are like we're cutting the cord we have celebrated for a long time but since we're not doing footwear we will not do dylan's footwear wow mm-hmm. so the issue comes out on his birthday which is when so um, we, yeah we do these like u.s made like italian leather mm, like loafers okay and his his birthday is in the end of may okay and we'll do a celebration i think we'll have a party or something where awesome. i don't even know what the uh marketing team is doing except okay. i was talking to them about a location but usually we do a big memorial thing yeah and, Last year we did a tons of people submitted artwork and we did auctions and things like that. Oh, and, you yeah. know, that's awesome. Whatever we can do to give back, you know, mm-hmm. it's, um, and getting people together, you know, yes. it's mm-hmm. always fun it's to important. get everyone together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so we did it in the shop last year and that gets kind of compact. So we have a bigger space we may use. I don't know. Oh, okay. We're going to yeah. find out. Awesome. I have to get my hands on one of those shoes. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hit me up. Yeah. Well, I this might is, have to get one to wear, one to wall. There you go. Yeah. yeah you know? This is the time. Yeah. You know? Wow. This is it. This is the, the end of an era of, of a piece. Man. And history. you would do it every year. You would release the, or just not. We've released, this will be the third, third. villain okay. um, loafer. Oh. He always liked premium stuff. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Top shelf. Yeah, man. Dylan could have had a huge premium brand. Oh, man. man. You know, he could have. Just the name too, like everything. He could have, he could have had this, uh, yeah, high fashion kind of thing. Well, we were lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah you know. I was gonna ask, like, how did you, when you first started Huff? How did you come across the team? How did you personally pick the riders at first? Um, I think it was it was really a group effort. So like, when we had Huff just in San Francisco, we had like a shop team. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you know. Fuck, we had Julian Stranger on the fucking team. Like, oh, wow. That's tight. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know? Amazing. We had Bushnitz, and mm-hmm. um, it was kind of like a, a local crew of people. And then anyone who came through, like Carol came through, he has a t-shirt or this. And, that, and we kind of just offered stuff out because mm-hmm. they're all friends, too. You know, yeah. it's all a family. Mm-hmm. And then when we started the company of just like the apparel, it wasn't, we weren't really like, sponsoring people for apparel it was just kind of like getting it out there because we were just a small company Mm -hmm. and the day we started to do footwear we were like we need riders right Mm. so we already we just started like finding people you know it was like sf we were finding people that were there like even like i think aaron harrington was in our first video we put out it it wasn't even video it was like a commercial it was like a 15 second pow- backside power slide he did with a 360 flip. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah. And it was, it was Aaron, you know, it was like, and then there's like, cause he was friends with Marty 
And it was just like using connections to find people. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like finding people that are stuck in other sponsors or want to do more. And we just started talking to everyone, mm, you know, we yeah. talked to Cromer and Plunkett and Josh and Joey. And it was just like, it was a good time to start building this team. Mm -hmm. Great team. And then, um, and then more came, you know, and some have left and it's building skate teams. It's, it's always challenging, mm -hmm. you know, and these days with, uh, payrolls is very challenging yeah. yeah and you're metropolitan you're bringing that back or that's uh, i've been i've been bringing metropolitan back for i don't even know three years, three now. years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe four years right so basically i think it was four years ago i went and talked to thebo mm -hmm. about the brand okay and i was like remember metropolitan he was like yeah and that was a rap <laughs> brand <laughs> i was like can i bring it back he's like yeah so we made a deal <laughs> very big uh but whatever it was just like you know i was i was asked i was asking like why didn't you move forward with it like what yeah. was what was the problems that you didn't take this brand and his whole thing was that at that point metropolitan was this east coast wheel company yeah and it was all very focused on east coast skaters and they were trying to they were a wheel company they had spitfire and then they had metropolitan and they were trying to grow Want to go global? Global. Yeah. And and um, at that point, Metropolitan was doing good, but it was very East Coast focused. Mm -hmm. And it was probably getting some focus around the world. Um, but I think they need to make a decision of which wheel company we're going to go for. We don't need two wheel companies. Right. And Spitfire was, always, was already a beast. And that's their focus. Yeah. So they chose to continue with Spitfire and stop doing Metropolitan. And it just came to a halt and mm. stopped. And um, so what, you know, 20 something years later, I was, I love the name. It's a great name. Um, I always loved the vibe of it. Um, so I decided to bring it back and I went and started trademarking, which, you know, I went to the trademark office and trademarked it. And, and guess what? It's available. No way. Yeah. So it seems like a name that would not be available. Yeah. 100%. yeah. So trademark, there you go. Oh. And then start trademarking around the world and, and doing, I did a lot of the, the back end work before the front end work. Yes. Which I, you have to. Yeah. You have to, if you're going to invest in a brand, right. You want to make sure that you're protected and not going to get stopped. I mean, mm -hmm. look at skateboarding. You've seen it, you know, Men yeah. Menace and oh, yeah, exactly. all those things. They, they had to stop because someone else owned the trademark. They don't do the back end. They don't do the research. Research. Yeah. 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 So no legal zoom back then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Google. It's true. <laughs> you would have to actually pay someone to search right? where yeah. you can go online and search yourself right now. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I did all that and just kind of like, I just made some product. Like I just made some sweatshirts and mm -hmm. t-shirts and hats and just kind of had it and was just kind of handing it out. And then the last about year and a half is where I've kind of gotten to a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and started to make collections or small collections and offering them out to a small amount of people and just kind of creating a, a brand. Okay. And it's more of a, it's a higher end company than than what i was doing it's it's basically how i did huff in the beginning of like um most most everything is made here in the u.s or canada mm. um, we will make stuff in china and japan okay. and other places but we make such small runs that everything is small and it's all these little factories and we pay more for our product which makes the product more expensive right. and blah 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 but it's just small and we hook up a bunch of dudes and i'm more just like let's just hook up friends and family and like okay people that like remember it because a lot of people remember it and they actually like they enjoy wearing it oh yeah because it yeah. brings back memories yeah, to them yeah mm -hmm. and it's keep it small yeah my my you know running a big brand now is super fun and then it has a, its challenge and running a small brand is super fun and also has its challenges so <laughs> it's like right, right it's just living in these two different worlds and um and I need to keep it fully separate from Huff. Too. I feel like a smaller brand would be more fun because you could just kind of do more things, right? Like bigger brands, you kind of have to, I don't know. You have to plan longer. Bigger, bra sure. bigger brands, your planning is way further out. Right. Where you have opportunities to move fast, but it, it messes up the wheels a little bit. And there then smaller go. brands, you could do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah you can turn you on know. a dime. Yeah. 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 And it all, I mean, basically you make the decisions and... You know, it's, you can do anything. Yeah. It's just controlling it. 
Right. So, so whatever. It's my. It's a. It's a new brand, and okay. um, it's uh, kind of like a passion project. It is, and, and I call. Yeah. I'm protecting the name, Metropolitan. Oh yeah. So that's like my goal: of protecting the history. We are not. Mm-hmm. We are not a wheel brand like it was in the past. So mm. I don't. I'm gonna make some wheels for fun. Okay. But I'm not. I don't want to be in that world of competing in the wheel brand companies because they're already there and yeah. they need to survive too. And I want to be, I like apparel and I want to make apparel. Man, yeah, it's always Gino wearing it and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby. Bobby, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hook up Bobby. It's great. Gino has his brand now too, Poets. Poets, Poets. Yeah. yeah, right. Super cool. Which he's brought that back as well. Yeah, it was yeah. So he had that a long time ago. Yeah. So there's kind of a resurgence of old and new brands, and then there's new new brands that are yeah. coming up. So right. it's pretty cool. It's a pretty interesting time, and now the internet has changed the playing field so much. Of like, what do you do that's right? What do you do that's wrong? Mm-hmm. You know, there's it's a it's a different world of how you advertise and all that. Do you keep up with comments and stuff like this, um, or do you kind of just? I scan because it's uh, for some. I, I feel like it's <laughs> half and half. I feel like you could learn a lot from, you know, your customers and your fans. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like a double-edged sword. You know, it's like eh, you can't listen to everybody. Yeah, you know? I think when I see something ridiculous, I just like their comments so that they like look back at me and like, why do you like my comment? Right, just, <laughs> yeah, blow them a kiss. Yeah, you know? yeah like yeah. you're stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I've seen this. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, but. you're delusional. <laughs> You're ignorant. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I know. Trust me. But trust I like me. your comment. Right. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, so do you do all the social media for like Metropolitan? I do a little bit of it. Okay. Hani does it. Me and Hani basically do it. How many people are working at, at Metropolitan now? We have a little team of just uh, throwing work out there. We we kind of farm out the work. Oh. So it's a different way of. We you know there's not like full-time employees it's you know there's like randy who runs around and kind of runs around la to like go to the print shops or the dye houses or the cut and sew places or the fabric places or whatever and he kind of wrangles up all the fabric and delivers and oh. organizes things mm-hmm. and then you know other work is just we just shop it out you've been working yeah. with randy for a long time though haven't you so randy worked for huff for a while ago mm-hmm. and then um he just basically Ended up quitting and then doing other stuff and then doing his art. And then um, he's just been helping me with uh, Metropolitan Production. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Because so, it's all local. I mean, it's really like driving around South Central, basically. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't you, do you golf with him a lot? I feel like I see you golfing on Instagram. I, have go- yeah, I, I, I haven't golfed in a while, but uh-huh. I was golfing with him. I golfed with him in suites and like the Malvin dudes and... Oh, yeah. uh, Buscemi. Buscemi, yeah. Um, I feel like Buscemi's I, always on a golf course. Buscemi's yeah. a rad. <laughs> he's like living his life of a golf pro right now. I know, seriously. Right? Really he's, yeah. he's super which, stoked. Which I'm he like, can do. Yeah, yeah which is got, like... He's... So I get this weird thing of like skateboarding and golf, and I know that like a lot of skaters golf, uh-huh. but sometimes I feel like I should be skating and not golfing. Not golfing. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, speaking of Buscemi, very successful. You guys grew up together. Do you guys ever like talk and kind of uh you know exchange notes yeah exchange notes we talk and, yeah you know. we probably don't talk enough no but we okay. do hang out you okay. know and i've gone on trips with him and hung out mm-hmm. um but you know he's like super old homie and yeah we do get together it's just we're all busy but um, he's built up buscemi yeah. and all uh, his new hot sauce great yeah he's got he's just an investor uncle now. paulie's <laughs> de- yeah. yeah that's why he's on the golf course yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People love Uncle Paulie's. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Paulie's is great, man. Yeah. man. I get, uh, sometimes I go over there and sometimes when I have to go to West Side, I'll get breakfast over there. It's mm-hmm. really good. But it wasn't an easy, I mean, he hustles. Yeah. He is a hustler. You have to, I mean, if you're going to do anything today, you got to hustle. You got to. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to put your face on everything, but you got to hustle yeah, and get man. everything done. And like, it's not going to get done by itself. Yeah. And his, his name's on the, I should have. Crab. Yeah. <laughs> The Crab Podcast with uh, <laughs> better trade that mar- trademark now. Yeah, <laughs> no, but we were asking. I mean, earlier, you know, is it weird to have like the, the Huff is bigger? It's bigger than you. Yes, you know, <laughs> which I love. That's it's, way that's way better because right for me, starting the company named Huff was basically like, holy shit, am I gonna fucking do this? It's hard to do. It was hard to do to put your name on something. If you have a soy, yeah, it's just like it was basically like. 
I'm not that person. And we didn't have a name. Mm -hmm. Everything that I was like spitting out in my head was just whack. I wrote, there's a, there's a huge list. I don't know where the list is at, but it's <laughs> really bad names. Okay. That I think Ann mentioned failed. some like Yo. Yo. Yeah, Yo was one. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. The, really, the thing was that I wrote graffiti. I wrote Huff all the time. And that was like, I'm always mm -hmm. tagging Huff. Like, it's just like. And plus all your boards were branded Huff. Yeah, Huff right? to some degree. Was, some said my full name. Sure. Some said Huff. And um, she had a friend who had some bag line in Venice and her name was Stacy Wu. And it was like Wu bags. And she's mm -hmm. like, it just rolls off the tongue it better. It works. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And went and trademarked and did all these things. And then we put the three letters on the fucking, the wall, the, the windows. And I was just like, oh my God, that's like <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and then I had to deal with the whole skate community and oh, everyone yeah. embraced it. I'm sure people talk shit, but it was like <laughs> the people that came to me embraced it and loved it. And, right. you know, and yeah, we can make cool graphics with it and totally. it can just be a name and part of history and all that. Mm -hmm. And I was able to extend my career. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Speaking yeah. of career, are you, are you, are you skating uh, full time or part time or? Or just BMXing. Mexican or just, uh, yeah. yeah. I get on a skateboard a couple times a week, but okay. sometimes it's just the push to get. Uh, from A to B. From A to B. Uh, doing some ollies? Yeah, I'll yeah. do an ollie or a manual, depending on what shoes I have on. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if I have Doc Martens on, it's like I'm not going to bust an ollie. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a shove it or something. Yeah. I love skateboarding, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to skateboard. I actually have this, like, addiction now to skateboard more. Um, but I have some injuries that are plaguing oh. me. So it's just like I'm battling injuries and I'm trying to. You just running businesses? <laughs> yeah. Run businesses yeah. And skateboarding. And yeah. it's like, I want to skateboard. I want to be out there just right. fucking. You know, I actually went skateboarding this weekend oh. at a skate park. Mm -hmm. And um, I had fun. Yeah. And I got tired really quick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't slam at all. And I did a couple of tricks. Okay. And I did some wall rides and some grinds. And I felt I had fun. Yeah. Um, that's the main and thing. that's what it's all about. But I'm definitely not who I used to be. I'm rusty. <laughs> rusty <laughs> I need a lot of oil. Right. Rusty, rusty huff. huff. Yeah. <laughs> but I love it. I mean, it's, fun it's is the in, thing, it's main in thing. me and I'm going to do it forever. It's right. just I'm not going to be who I was when I was, you know, 25. Sure. I'm not going to blast a five foot ollie and, you know, all these things. Right. But. But you still could a bit. I bet you yeah. still could. If, yeah. if I practice for long enough, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But right. some of my, I have this really bad shoulder in, injury, mm. and um, it's I've fallen so much on my right shoulder oh, that I've no. basically I've been dealing with this for ten years, mm. and basically I've basically knocked almost all the cartilage off of my shoulder. Damn. So where I think it was ten years ago, I went into the doctor and he was like, "Oh, we're gonna give you a shoulder replacement." And I was like, "What?" Whoa. I, just, I just turned white and I'm like, "No, you're not." I went to another doctor and he's like, "You're fucked," but we're gonna do all these things to help you. So <laughs> I still go to physical therapy and I do all these yeah. things to help strengthen my shoulder. Right. But it's like, just think when you do like a 360 flip and your arm comes up your super fast, uh, it's like you're yeah. you're you're giving it a little thing and like, you know, that's why I was playing golf because it was a little bit less range of motion. But mm. then it, it really started to kick in this year. So I've been just being mellow. Then I went skating and then I could feel it a little bit pain. But then I'm like, oh, it's just like soreness. I need to keep going. Like, you know, it's just like building it back up. Yeah. But if I take one gnarly slam, it's like that's I have fear now. And fear in skateboarding is the worst fucking thing ever. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, it's hard to deal with. Yeah. Just don't ever fall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so you do things that are fun, yeah. but sure. you still can fall in. Oh, you can fall in anything. Yeah. Dude. yeah. It's insane. It's so. when you're not paying attention. Don't flip yeah. your board. Yeah. yeah. Don't, you know, do only do 50, 50. You can fall doing that too. Though. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Can, fall, yeah. you yeah. can fall in anything. And right. I have, and you, you know, you're still, you still know how to fall. So you yeah. roll out of shit right. and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out the right place for me to be on my board. Okay. And I'm trying to improve my, uh, my Ollie. How? Prove it. Come on, how? <laughs> it's like, no, like the, it's rusty. The best it's rusty. rusty. <laughs> rusty. I forgot. Rusty how? <laughs> so rusty. Rusty. Yeah. I need oil, you know? Yeah. I need like a lot oh, of you Penn's Oil Huff collab. Penn's oil, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Come out with a new part. <laughs> yeah. Dude, just post Instagram clips, man. I know. People, people love would it. love it, yeah. dude. I don't know. I'd I don't have awesome. enough footage, man. 
Just put your phone down, hit the record button, and just skate. I need to get that drone that follows you. Oh, that, yeah. That'd we have cool. nothing around So you're there. telling <laughs> us no more Huff parts. Maybe I'll get a couple of yeah, uh, clips. Yeah, a couple clips. You know, yeah, Kelly's okay. fucking pushing me. Right, right. <laughs> well, just don't, yeah, don't Peer listen. pressure. You don't have to listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll no. film you, dude. <laughs> hit me up. I'll film you. That's for sure. <laughs> Let me bring you back to New York. Huh? Growing up in New York, do you have any fond memory i'm sure you have a bunch but is there like some fond memories of growing up and skating and any of the crew keenan you know, what was it like or, skating with keenan back yeah, then man, man. I, I mean, mean keenan was just fun like he had this laugh that kind of brought inf- joy to everyone infectious yeah it was an it's, infectious laugh and you never really saw keenan down mm-hmm. i've seen him down but he was always always happy always ready to like go do things or just enjoy life really mm-hmm. you know he was he was the happiest person i you know we all have sad sides and sad mm-hmm. sides mm-hmm. um yeah but keenan was just like a wanderer and he would just hop in your life and make everything happy and then hop out and go to the next person and you know his family life wasn't the best mm-hmm. you know um mm-hmm. he lived with his grandmother in in harlem and the house had a whole bunch of other kids in there and oh. you know so it wasn't like a place he wanted to be all the time because it was crowded mm-hmm. so he would come you know he'd stay with me and then he would stay with Gino and then go stay with Ben and then go stay with Bishemi and kind of hop around right whoever whoever was like could hang out yeah. you know and skate or he'd go up to the playground and go up there and skate and stay with Tony or mm-hmm. whoever up there you know yeah and um that's that was him. I mean, it was also like we were really hanging out towards like the end of our high school years, mm. you know. So I think he was kind of going to high school, but kind of not going at the same time. Right. And then I I just had to finish, so it was just like we were just starting that like skate every day, yeah, all night every day, yeah. and then summers would come and it was on. You know, you just you'd go wherever it would take you, go to Philly, go to Long Island, mm-hmm. go to Connecticut. Boston, wherever, yeah. wherever, yeah. wherever the car or the train or the bus would take you. <laughs> so Keenan, Keenan was always a special one, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, New York had a good crew of people, you know, but we all came from different, uh, different types of homes. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of people that lived with their grandmothers or didn't have homes at all. You right, know, there well. was definitely some people that. Like, you know, even Steven, he lived at the church for a while, oh, yeah. you know, because of what happened to him. Mm-hmm. And um, skateboarding definitely brought a lot of different people together in New York City that came from different types of homes. Right. You know, my mom always said, like, it was like the best thing for me because I knew every every race of kid yeah. would come through my house. And she was like, you know, you're in a melting pot of people. And it's like, it's so good for you to 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 meet all these people yeah totally you know? yeah they, they become like my lifetime friends and so. it must have been cool too to see everybody kind of coming up at yeah. the same time oh, and yeah. everybody's doing it you know that's that's pretty special too yeah yeah so we all we all found a passion right and skateboarding is that and and uh we all you know you got to think we lived in this city that how many millions of people live there mm-hmm. and people from Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, New- Manhattan, Jersey, mm-hmm. Philadelphia, Long Island. We all met up. And it's yeah. like this big area that we all would go to. We all went to the banks. It was like our our little magnet. Right. You know, we all ended up there all the time. Were your parents pretty supportive of everything you were doing with skating? Yeah, they loved it. They were mm-hmm. more of like... Um, they wanted me to get my work, my school work done. Right. So basically my life there was basically, you had to do well in school to their, their motto was you had to, to you had to go get a college degree to succeed in life or, mm. or it would give you more opportunities. Okay. So they were basically offering that to me to go get a college degree. Mm. And, um, I really didn't like school, <laughs> yeah. you know, as a lot of people don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I was able to get through it. Okay. Um, but I think I basically, I turned pro 
six months into college and I decided to quit college. Oh. So they were definitely bummed that like, oh, because they couldn't, you couldn't really see what skateboarding was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they were just bummed on that. But then when they, when they saw the success of it, they were really happy. Yeah. Mm. But as like, as a kid in New York, my, my dad was like, hey, if you're going to skateboard all the time, you have to do a sport in school. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do a fucking sport in school. <laughs> you know, I was like, but all right, I'll do it. And I like, I joined the uh, cross country tr uh, track team mm. because I thought that running was the easiest sport in school. Okay. <laughs> but when you do yeah. cross country, the races are three and a half miles long. Yeah. yeah. Full speed. Three and a half <laughs> miles long. Yes. They're just the race, the daily. Around the track. No. You, what you, you run cross country the yeah. in, the, in the woods. Yeah. Wait, did you, just, you take a bus to the woods? No, we we'd, we'd go up to, uh, <laughs> we'd go up to Van Cortlandt Park, which is at like the last stop okay. in the Bronx. And there's this park up there, Van Cortlandt. And basically you start at the beginning of the field and you run as fast as you can into this little trail and then it goes up and down hills and then it pops out and then you run flat all the way to the finish line and you're exhausted. But what's the point? Are you racing? <laughs> you're or racing. Is it, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, oh, racing. Oh, you're racing. It's a race. Okay. Like, you, you're lined up with like 100, 200 kids <laughs> and the Jesus. fucking gun goes off and you all just start running forward. Now, is this other schools? Yes. To okay. So you it's all like, get together at the in the woods and you all the gun and then... Full speed. Did you ever win? No, no. <laughs> well, I won at my second school, but it was at a very low level. Mm. You did it every single year in high school. Yes. Wow. I was able to quit my last year, like maybe halfway through. Mm. But I went to so I went to school Xavier for two years, and it was like military boys, Catholic, the whole thing. Like you had to do ROTC. You know, everything was top tier sports mm. and academics, and. um I ran there for two years, which was really competitive. Mm -hmm. I basically had to run five miles a day Jeez. and then I would go skateboarding. That's <laughs> And then I went to this other, so I was kind of failing out of school and I, I moved to this other school called York and it was, it was uptown and I joined the track team there or the cross country team and it was really small. And my first race that I went there, they were at such a low level. Like I was at like extreme oh. competitive and they were at a low level that the first race I went to, they had blind kids running with guides. That's kind of rad though. It's still rad that yeah. they were doing it. Yeah. But if you're full speed. Oh, you're, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just so you like, won. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> the kids and also the kids that were in the races too, they were so lazy. Like they would go full speed into the, into the woods. Okay. And fucking pull out cigar cigarettes and start oh, smoking. Really? Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I like, can't smoke while I'm fucking running. Like yeah. I'm trying to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to finish this race and go skating. Get the fuck out. Right? Yeah. Oh right. wow. You, you wouldn't stop for a yeah. puff or two. Yeah. No. I was like, I'm trying to get. Yeah. What was wow. it? What was it like for like growing up in the city skating? Did other people that didn't skate did they ever like, you know, skateboarding at one point wasn't that cool to other people? Did they give you a hard time at all? Like skating when you yeah. went to school well i wasn't able to skate to school no i mean you know what i mean but like being um, a skateboarder at school is that like a weird thing back then yeah i felt like a, an outcast mm -hmm. yeah you know I, but at that time i was also like i was super into punk and i was dyeing my hair every color and mm. i was like i just looked different mm. and i probably was i was like more trying to like follow skateboard trends and i always cut my hair weird and dyed it weird colors mm -hmm. so i was kind of this like I was an outcast in my class, basically, like no one skated mm -hmm. and I, I kind of connected with a few kids, but it was like they were on, they were totally wanted to do different things. Mm -hmm. They wanted to go do drugs. And I was like, I want to go skate, you yeah, know, and it was yeah, just yeah. like different levels. I was so I had such a passion for skateboarding that I just just wanted to go to school to finish my work and go skating. Go skating. Oh, yeah. OK, right. And that was what I did. You know, that was like I, I had a different crew of friends outside of school. So I just went to school to, to do school work yeah. and leave. Yeah. Just so you can see. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, it's a different experience when you're not connecting with everyone. Totally. So, true. Yeah. You know, and then you're just there to, to do your work. Right. So it's, yeah. a it's a job at that school becomes a job. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I take you could beat Roger in a race right now. Oh, totally. man. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> do you still run? I don't run at all. Raj can run pretty fast. I can walk. Oh, you can walk. Yo, you, wa you walk really I, fast for some reason. He does. Dude. He's a good, yeah. It's like weird. It takes these long <laughs> strides. 
I hate running. Yeah. <laughs> well, running's not the best thing for you. Either. Yeah. It's you know, knees. knees. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole. Yeah. But then, so like a lot of times when I would skate, I'd have to run super fast, jump on my board, and ollie and do a trick. Oh, uh, yeah. So it actually it helped me out in a lot of ways. Yes. But then I fucking hate running. Didn't you get a uh, jaywalking ticket? Yes. For the ollie over at Sunset? Yes. Whatever. So what did the ollie, which one? So the one downtown where the state Center banks. is, the car wash bank. Oh, yeah? Oh. I think I went back there like four times. Okay. But this one time I was trying it, I was running across the street, jumping on my board, ollie up, ollieing up the curb, and then hitting the the bank and trying to ollie the thing. The, yeah, the little wind, or the doorway. Yeah. And, yeah. I was doing it a whole bunch, and there's so much traffic there. And this cop saw me doing it and gave me a fucking jaywalking ticket. Wow. But you weren't really crossing the street. You were kind of taking off in the middle, of the, middle of the street. But I think I think in the end, I didn't even do it that way because I was trying to ollie up and like create this motion. But yeah. I think I actually skated down the street and like carved into it and then ollied it oh, and came back. That's a steep bank too. It's so hard. Yeah. Wow. It's, so, it's such like, because you have to land. Basically, the, the bank is the width of your board. Mm-hmm. So you have to hit it at a certain angle mm-hmm. and then you have to land in it at a certain angle or else you're not going to make it. Like I landed it a whole bunch on two wheels, but then I, then the one that I made at the end of the DVS video, uh-huh. I actually like all four wheels went yeah. into the bank. Oh. Yeah. And then we did a, we did a, I think it was Jake and Gottwig. We had them do it together. Ollie it. Cause mm-hmm. I was trying to like have them do this little, uh, I think it was Jake and mm. Gottwig that they double ollied it like, okay. at the same time. Yeah. And Joey Pepper did it too. He did a backside. Oh, Joey yeah. Pepper. I, I would think yeah. it would be easier backside. Potentially. Yeah. Still. Front side, I, I don't know if that's a, yeah. It's just, I mean, it's risky. Yeah, I guess a backside you can kind of carve it more. Yeah, Like safely bit. carve yeah. it. But huh. I don't I don't know if anyone kick flipped it or anything. I don't know if there's been like Harley. other tricks on it. I think Vincent might have done something over it. Like oh, a really? kickflip or a shove it or something? No, I think we might just like switch all it or something. Switch all <laughs> no, it. Shit, Anything you do over good. that is insane. Yeah. I mean. And that thing's gone now or there's oh, is it? kind of boarded up. I don't know. I don't. I drove by there recently. I don't. It may still be, be there. They might be fixing up maybe. Oh. I mean, it's prime real estate, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, car yeah. wash is gone and uh, skyscrapers in. Yeah. <laughs> Especially that little zone. Yeah. yeah. Man. But they do have that little ledge on the, the people skate yeah. the ledge, too. Oh, huh, I haven't been right. down there in a while. Man. Any other tricks that you feel like? Uh, what, what size board do you ride? <laughs> Eight to five. Eight but to I, five? I'm, now I'm like riding... I'm riding a Tommy Guerrero, like wider shape, you oh. know, smaller nose, bigger okay. tail, mm-hmm. huh. old. So I like old boards. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like flop the board a little bit, it's normal. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Rusty. <laughs> Rusty Huff. Get more to land on. More board to land on. Yeah. More board to land on. Yeah. Is there, as you get older and you got your company and doing all this stuff, has there any been any conversation with Jim? down at deluxe of like, you know, your board or is there a board? That's what I'm asking. I mean, is there any like, you know, are you retiring me right now? Jim called me and he asked (laughs) me to do, he didn't want to do it himself. So he asked me to do it. No, but I'm just curious because as we get older, you know, it's like, it's one of those things. Yeah. They basically only do these like one off boards every three or four months for, um, for me. and, And, um, do you want more? No. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of like association, I guess, mm-hmm. that I'm like still associated with real yeah. and part of that family. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need boards. I don't need to have a, my name on a board or anything like that. I just think it's... Uh, but there's people out there that want to buy that, that board. Yeah. hundred percent. So I think yes. having a special board and, and it was cool to do a reissue and things like that. And mm-hmm. I think it should be more in that world of reissuing some cool boards that happen yeah. to kind of celebrate the period, mm-hmm. but I don't, you know, I'd rather have the, uh, the up and comers be the ones that are getting the boards right. and the cash and all that. Yes. Like, it's like, those are the ones that need the money to go skate. Right. Yeah. You know? So it's just more like a novelty thing. And, and it's, it's also like not many people have been on their board sponsors for this long. So, you know, 26 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, so I mean, maybe I should have got fired a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> like Raj said, I mean, people still want your boards, yeah. bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I was just asking because it's, you know, as you get older, it's it's one of those things that, you know, people think about, you know, as a skater, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh. It's, it's tough. I mean, it, I feel like uh, 
I feel like I went through it. It's like a, um, there's some kind of emotional thing of like when you're transitioning from being a pro skater to mm-hmm. working. Yeah. And it's emotional. Yes. And you need fucking like a therapist or something to like talk <laughs> through it because once you start losing, you're like being that good. It's fucking, again, yeah, fuck it's you. emotional. It's a little, totally. <laughs> yeah. And you know, what yeah. do you do? You start drinking, you start doing these, you start just not paying attention anymore and then you get mm-hmm. worse and you know, it's like all of a sudden you're in a big hole and you know, it's like you got, you need to have a, uh, a plan to do it and do other things. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you have the other thing. So that yeah. keeps you occupied at the same time, which, and also keeps your, uh, it keeps your name out there too. You're in the, you're in the business, yeah. you know, which is great. I was just lucky enough to, uh, to make a move a long time ago to yeah. like, I think I felt like, I remember when I decided to kind of create the brand huff with, mm-hmm. and it was more of, I was already whatever, 10 years deep into being a pro skater and I already felt being beat up at times. Oh yeah. I still loved it, but I still felt like it was wearing on me mm-hmm. and I needed to do something else to stay in the game to continue. Cause I love the lifestyle of skateboarding. Right. You didn't want to be a nine to five or yeah. So it's like, how do you stay in skateboarding, but not be always skateboarding? Yeah. yeah. And or that, how do you go support it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that's a hard decision to make, yeah. you know, especially when you're like skateboarding on a consistent basis to then try to build another brand. That's going to totally take your time away from what well, you, don't, you love You don't to do. realize that in the beginning. You like, don't, right. I think it's like having enough support around and thinking we can build a brand, but mm-hmm. not realizing how difficult it is. Right. But we are doing it in small little bits. Like we are just, you know, making some shirts and mm-hmm. making some hats and sweatshirts and slowly growing this brand. But once it became this like this brand that we had to distribute and we had to build and we had to have season after season after season, then it's like full time. Yeah. And you need a lot of people. Yeah. Cause it's your name. It's your vision. You yeah. know, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be on top of it. How many people you got work for Huff right now? I don't even know. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> At least 60. 60 Damn. people. Yeah. That's impressive, man. Well, we have our own warehouse. We yeah, have our, still, I mean, we have everything. Wow. Um, I think 60. Well, that's with warehouse people, I think. Okay. Or maybe more. They count too. That's it. Yeah, 500. Yeah, everybody. No. Right. 500. <laughs> no, we're not. We're at a, like a, a nice size. We're not, you know, we're not too small or too big. Yeah. That's great, man. I mean, to, just the fact that you're employing people yeah. is yeah. amazing. Yeah, and you got the shop on Fairfax oh, that's, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. How does that, how's that? Dude, the whole, the whole uh, Hiroshi thing that's in oh, there. Oh, have a big middle finger in there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you that's pay a, him to do that? Of course we paid him. <laughs> he's a, he is like, he's a huge artist and he's yeah, only going to get bigger. Yeah. He is incredible. You know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we own his biggest statue, but we own a big statue. I mean, did you say like, just make it as big as you can? No. Or what? We, we designed <laughs> what is it that? to be about like five feet. Okay, uh, it's actually just... my middle. It's actually my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how does that work? He, he took a photo of you. He like measured everything on my hand. Really? And like took photos of it in every single way, and just fucking like rescaled it to be this huge finger. That's incredible. Wow. Yep. I wonder how he does it. I mean, have you seen his process or anything? Yeah, Did he you... shows his process online a little. Oh, he bit. does he? Yeah. Um, oh, okay, I miss those. He's just like, he's a genius, man. Yeah. He's insane. Mm-hmm. How long Shit does it take does. to do that? Couple months. That's at least three yeah. to six months. Three to six. Wow. I mean, he's probably working on a couple projects, but it's like he needs to focus on each project. Like he did it. We have an Apple in our New York store. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that took more. I think every project for him is challenging because there's a new way to build it. Yeah. You know, it's not like he doesn't build and repeat. Right. He's you know, and, figure out. and he builds. He builds small things. He builds big things, and you know. So like we're opening a San Francisco store and he's building a, uh, a fire hydrant to put in it. So it's oh, like, wow. you know, but that's, you know, honestly. Oh, wait, you had a fire hydrant on one of your boards. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically wherever it is. So I think that's it's over there. So yeah. that's the fire hydrant. When we did a show with him in our um, downtown warehouse, mm-hmm. that was the fire hydrant that um, everyone ollied over. Yeah. That's so right. Dylan has yeah, a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tori has yeah. a photo. There's all okay. these people that skated. So he, he basically built it raw. And um, 
he wanted everyone to skate it and ding it up. Interesting. And then he had everyone sign it, and then he engraved everyone's signatures in it, and then he brought it back to Japan and coded it back so it's like sealed. Oh wow! And then, um, so the people that own that are letting us borrow it for our San Francisco store because the one fire hydrant he's building is uh is gonna take longer gonna because take he's long. busy. He's at every sure. he's at every art basel. Like he's he's in the art world, which is so awesome that he's like being successful in it. Fuck yeah. And he's doing his own thing. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. It just goes to show how well they're built as well. Oh, yeah, when, yeah. when you're, when people are awling over a fire, you know, and dinging it up and he shit, wants it. Like, he wants the stuff to have scratches. That's and, sick. And, you know, that's wow. his, uh, how did you even get in contact with him? I don't even know what year it was, but I think I saw it on like some weird Japanese blog or something that I was honey E or something like that. But they showed these, they showed these like five little apples and they were like broken edges on them and it had a little leaf on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, they're like $400. And I was like writing like, how do, how can I buy one? Like, I want to buy one. <laughs> it's like $400 for this piece of art that yeah. you're like, fuck, this is great. <laughs> and um, sold out, like gone. Oh, man. And then now Taki, who works, who works for me, he was like, oh, I know this guy Tomo, he knows him. And this guy Tomohiro from Nexus 7, he basically introduced us to um to hiroshi and basically it was just like he's like oh, he's he loves skateboarding he's mm. like a skateboard nerd that just loves everything about skateboarding and then he like created this art out of it it's crazy and it's like we all just connected and he's an awesome dude That's Damn. so it was just luck of the draw and you know it's like i was searching out this japanese dude who made this crazy art that i loved and then now we have these huge sculptures. <laughs> That's, That's a so huge right. investment too right there. So oh, oh yeah. I'm sure he gives you a di How much would he charge for a big six foot nine club? So how much do you think he like robs statue? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, okay, that too. But no, you know, you, gotta, you have to talk to his manager. Okay. That's probably like, okay. you know, a couple million. couple mil <laughs> no, million. We're not there. <laughs> We're not there yet, Keith, man. <laughs> he was doing the, uh, the barracks. Uh, trophies. Trophies yeah. for a while. You yeah. should have just got in there and won one. Yeah. Yeah. It's with, yeah. I tried the first. Should have won, Chris. Yeah, I think it was the second <laughs> one. I Barrow kicked my ass doing double flips. This guy, you know. Barrow did? Double flips, you know, Kelly? Yeah. Nobody likes double flips. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you ever do with a bit? You, no, you no, 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 no. I, was, I, uh, I was already sore at that You're time. Already, <laughs> you were already sore. <laughs> Rusty Huff. Yeah. I did some Ollie contests. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Bro. I think when uh, when Danny won that one, I was gonna ask the Danny tried, Wainwright. Did yeah, you try, I tried you, that one. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I think I just uh, you could have won. I was that sore. Ball. 42, 44? 44 inches. No, I, I mean it was forty two. I think when Danny yeah. did yeah. forty two. I think it's up to like forty four and a half now or something. Who did Lewis. that one? It's like Jake Hayes and someone else. It's so hard. So when you're alling over something so straight, yeah, then visually to fucking get over it, it's so hard. I bet. You need a bump. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and the Danny sure. Wainwright was interesting because he was almost like pumping himself. Yeah, I swear. He was there, was, like going, there was like a little bump in the floor. Yeah, it was a little bit. <laughs> just a little. It helps. Every day. Every little bump helps. Yeah. You just got to tell yourself that there's that little like groove is a bump. Man, you could have won that thing. <laughs> I tried. I was there. I tried. Yeah didn't make it well that was the one where they all pumped it up to like reese forbes to win it right yeah, yeah. and then yeah and then it, it was a reese forbes ollie contest it was a, his was. Yeah, it was contest. His, yeah. yeah and then someone else took it or danny uh, took it yeah i mean happens. that's you know it's an upset it's hard to ollie on the spot bro right? oh for yeah. sure it's just especially high you have to do it multiple times yeah it's not like you're just gonna go for this one ollie it's like you got to build it up and go to the next height and the next height and the next height and by 42 you're fucking exhausted yeah. it's like you're running the three miles in high school yes and you're sore and smoked a cigarette in between <laughs> <laughs> listen bro we could sit here all fucking day dude this has been amazing. Cool, man. Thank Anything you. else you want to talk about before we There's wrap like it up? There's like a million things, but uh, Yo. we'll just do a recap one day. Let's talk about Cease and Desist. Oh, yeah. Cease and Desist. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you got a whole collection. I've gotten a lot of them. Really? <laughs> now, is it scary to get a C? We uh, I've never got one. Is it scary I mean, to get really, one? I mean, it's really... it's Maybe your first one. It's like, well, uh-oh. What was your first one? It may have been Burberry, but I can't even remember. Oh, that's a big one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just stealing the, uh, the flannel. So pattern? basically what happened was um, we had these, we basically like New Era offered us this flannel that looked like a, uh, 
a Burberry print. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we basically, at this time for us, New Eras were really hot. And we oh, basically yeah. put it on a hat. And um, it was just coming out. But I think the next day it was coming out. Uh, I got drunk with Honey that night. And I used to have this this blog on Honey E. is a Japanese okay. blog. And we got drunk. And we were like, let's just write Huff Times Burberry on it and throw the photo. And I did that. Oh, no. And so the next day, <laughs> someone from Burberry is coming in buying the hats and all the kids are buying them and it's like super successful but we didn't put like huff times burberry on the receipt or anywhere on the tag or anything we just made a joke on the internet on the blog on yeah. the blog so the day before the release the day before the release so instantly we get letters and all the letters go straight to our trademark lawyer because they're attached in that world yeah, okay mm-hmm. you know if you want to sue if you want to get someone if you look it up it goes to probably me, and then it goes to the lawyer. Gotcha. If you send it to the lawyer, they address it faster. Oh, yeah. I was just like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, Jeez. <laughs> so we had to take it down. Okay. We took it off. We apologized, and we had to pay some money for it, too. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Some of them are just, hey, stop, yeah. cease and desist, and other ones give are... Give us the rest of your inventory. Ye- or you just yeah. g- give us a cut. There's that, too. So mm-hmm. some are stop on the hands, yeah. stop making it nothing comes out of your pocket you just delete all the product Mm -hmm. and then some are um royalty not even royalty just you know they're usually smaller fees but they're a fee so you know and you usually have to show what you sold and all these things and you know there's all that so it it just becomes more work and more headache and it just happens and we've made mistakes Yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes even like you just have like Especially with Huff, it's going so fast, and there's so many things, and you can't see everything. Right. So sometimes things happen. Yeah. And it's not even like your mistake. You don't mean to do it. We did that one kind of, the Burberry thing kind of uh, <laughs> stupidly. <laughs> <laughs> but Don't get drunk the night before a drop. Yeah, just yeah. things happen, and uh, you make mistakes, sure. or you don't yeah. see everything. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. you know, it just, it happens. We've had tons of things where, you know, it's just a, a knockoff graphic and mm-hmm. you didn't see it. And then all of a sudden you're getting calls and you're like, oh, no, not again. Do you go after the artist that did it? Like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> we usually talk to them and yeah. we're, we try to have uh, more boundaries up. Like, hey, you know, if you're going to knock something off, come talk to me before you knock it off. Right. Yeah. Cause you can't, you just can't see everything. Yeah. You know, and it's. It's it's skateboarding. We've been knocking things off forever. You know, we've yeah. been knocking off yeah. graphics forever and putting them on stuff, and mm-hmm. it's just part of our culture. Right. And it's funny because like skaters will get pissed off if they feel like the outside world is ripping us off. Yeah. You know, when we were ripping them off the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is man. fucked up. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't. I've gotten a lot of cease and desist, and I have like a binder full of them, and I'm probably missing some uh, some of them, but. Oh. We did this one logo that was, it basically it was dissing rollerblades and it just said stoops and it had a rainbow rollerblade. Okay. It was super cool. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the guys, I don't know if it's the owner or someone that worked there, wrote this like very clever, nasty, well-written letter. And it's just hilarious. Rollerblade. Rollerblade. Wow. Yeah. Just threatening to sue and all that stuff. But, you know, we took it down and... And uh, we also, I think we did a um, a store window with the letter printed, and we bought a whole bunch of used rollerblades and hung them <laughs> in the window. Oh, really? Yeah, it was at, it was Amazing. actually at a Zoomies in New York. We basically bought like a hundred pairs of rollerblades. No <laughs> way! Hung them in their window and put this letter up. And the guys at that Zoomies said people kept on coming in asking for rollerblades the whole time. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so actually, you actually boosted their sales. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. you're making them cool, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then, because it was this dude, Cam's, one, it was part of Cam's concept, and he wanted to ship all the rollerblades back to Skid Row hmm. so that the people at Skid Row would be rollerblading all around. <laughs> That'd be incredible. That would love actually to see that. be amazing. <laughs> He's looked up the street. I know, just rollerblading. Yeah. Wow, man. They all got them. <laughs> but who would have even thought, like, Rollerblade? It, it's an actual b- b- branded it's brand. company. It's a brand. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah. you don't think about that. You just say Rollerblades. It's well, just, it was like Google. The, yeah. Rollerblades came out. I mean, I remember, you know, I was going to skate. I was going to, like, a, for a sports hockey. store. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they yeah, were yeah. for street hockey. Mm-hmm. So it just said Rollerblade. And then 
five, ten years later, a culture came out that was doing right. tricks. Yeah. But in yeah. the beginning, it was just roller hockey. Yeah, Gino yeah. Iannucci. Yeah. You I ever... ro- I, I played uh, roller hockey oh, as yeah? a kid. Yeah. We mm. played street hockey, and we right. were on roller skates, and we actually did use roller blades at some point, mm-hmm. but we didn't do tricks. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta make that clear. No <laughs> tricks. <Soul grind. laughs> we did not do tricks. Gino, Gino did tricks. Dab, did he? He probably no. looked beautiful doing I it. I know. I was gonna say he probably looked really good. That's where his good push came yeah. from. Yeah. All that rollerblading. Oh, uh, Gino was a hockey player, man. He's probably pretty good. Yeah. Wow, man. Listen, bro. We've talked about a lot of stuff. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Like this is, you know, we always say it here, but you come back anytime. Come hang out with us on the other show if you want to top sh- talk shop. Talk yeah, skating, cool. you know, yeah. just yeah. hang out. If you have a new drop or something, come by, show it to us. Give us first dibs, maybe, you know? Dress us up in it. <laughs> just, yeah. Maybe a Huff Nine Club collab or something. Dave, if you have another yeah. rollerblade yeah. thing coming out, <laughs> Kelly will gladly wear whatever you want. Yeah, let's go film. <laughs> <laughs> I'll film you. I'll yeah, wear the rollerblades and I'll film you. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Kelly fits right into that. There we go. Um... <laughs> Can we give you some nine club stuff to take home and yeah, take to the office and yeah. oh maybe some uh, coffee mugs to drink your uh, yeah totally you know your big uh, sixty for his entire what I biggest need, spread? I need sixty of everything sixty <laughs> for everyone that works there oh god <laughs> listen fuck we'll give you a discount I have my, I have my truck here do you do it? no <laughs> we'll give you, the warehouse we'll give you a discount code for the website yeah uh, Kelly we please sure. g- get him some stuff what, what from size our, t-shirt are you. Uh, large, large, large. We're running low on some stuff. Or medium, medium or large. Oh, yeah. We just um, I kind of in between. We're we're making some new stuff. Yeah, you know, it's hard. We're small. You know, it's literally like us three here. So we we don't have a whole. You know, you want me to make your product? Could you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris just hates the whole product game. My production people would kill me. Wait, wait they? <laughs> Guess what, guys? We're doing the nine club stuff now. No, but it's it is. I think product is tough. It it's is. a tough game, and I I'm 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 scared of it. That's all. It's a scary thing, you know. And it's not like we do seasons. Or there's here, people but who just do that. I know people that just like help smaller brands. Oh, facilitate. Do stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we could. Uh. I don't know. We'll talk after the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't go on and give away all our trade secrets over here at the nine club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, any any man. other any plans, you know? Thank you, Kelly. Any um, there you go. Any collabos coming? Yeah. What's, What's going coming on? Next? What's going on with Huff and Huff? I don't even honestly like. We we work like a year out, and we're mm-hmm. always we're planning twenty twenty right now. So when the what's out now, I can't even remember. <laughs> I need like a refresher of what's like dropping and all that. It's like what collabs are happening. Like we just did a. A collab with this kid felt he's got a cool little brand, you know, like. Well, I saw the yeah, like, I saw the stuff for that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah that's, that's cool. Yeah. Like things like that, and then, you know, we did something with Popeye before that. So it's like, you know, cool up and coming brands, or mm-hmm. you know, this kid's doing rad stuff, and then Popeye, which is more of a licensing thing of mm-hmm. like the history of, you know, that oh, cool art. Okay. Um, we're always doing new stuff. Right. But we're also focusing on like building like this line that's you know, well built. How do you even do a year out? That's insane. You, uh, how do you even know what the, the, like, well, we basically like, you have to, you have to design nine months to a year out. You mm-hmm. have to design like line plans and merchandise and then go fabric shopping and pattern. You have to build your patterns, like everything, but oh. we have a big team of people, sure. Sure, of you know, course. and we have a bunch of designers who are, you know, they really like, they're in the culture of it, you know, mm-hmm. and they, they love fashion. They love design and right. everything. So and they have their finger on the pulse yeah. kind of what yeah. is to come. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of can feel it and see it, but oh. you know, the problem is we're all looking at the same thing. So you got to kind of try to break out of that box and go to museums or, yeah. you know, go to fabric shows or just kind of do different things, oh. get inspired by different things than looking at the same site on the internet. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause then everyone starts looking the same. Yeah. You know? yeah. You got to be very careful. Got to stand out in a crowd, yeah, so to true. speak. Yeah. yeah. Are the footwear and the apparel stuff like on the same program? Like, are they different times? Like, are, is one a year out, one like nine months out, or footwear is further out? Oh, okay. Mm. But we we try to get them on the same schedule. Okay. Like, do you match the clothing similar to what the shoes are coming out that time that you guys have? 
like in design yeah no, no. they're totally different we, no they have two different color palettes oh, okay mm -hmm. okay so you know basically in the beginning of the process you have uh, a merchandiser who kind of gives a line plan with pricing oh. and and units and what it will be like it would say you know like a jacket for this amount of money mm -hmm. and how many jackets and then the designers can kind of tell the styles of it and oh. then the colors of it and materials of it Interesting. but it needs to match the uh the dollar amount because we want to hit certain dollar amounts right huh so and then there's like wild cards in there where you can kind of build whatever or you can build a higher priced item so it's a whole science behind it you need a good team you need, you need someone you need someone there guiding because we're working off of um, data from all of our past sales right so you have to kind of forecast yeah, yeah. you got to forecast everything and um you know either expand or decrease depending on what's happening so Man, it takes it's it's hard jobs people yeah. you know it's like the jobs that people do in there it's it's uh they have a lot of passion you know? does hayden still work there no oh. he's not because the footwear program so oh. kind of when we decided to not do footwear any anymore um that was kind of the uh the end yeah because there's no more designing at yeah. this point it's mm -hmm. just it's all done mm -hmm. yeah so but you gave everybody time yeah to find new yeah. yeah yeah what about the writers in this case like are they gonna start writing for the apparel stuff or so some writers will move over to apparel mm. um some will not okay you know it's it's kind of a case by case so um i feel like a lot of them are on levi's <laughs> yeah there's well, that true. too so yeah. you know so some are moving and you know, okay. like even like you know, Austin has his own brand former, so mm -hmm. he'll he'll focus on former. Right, right. You know, so there's just things like that where, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, man, if there's another spot on the, team, I would love to. I mean, <laughs> yeah. is, you want to be on Thank the footwork? Yeah. <laughs> For Chris, the only dude on the footwork. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to the end of the year. I'm not a footwear yeah. company that doesn't even exist anymore. I need a part though by the end of the year. A part? <laughs> How long? To release. How long yeah. is a part? Can it be like a minute? Yeah, a minute. A minute. Drops apart. I every could do Monday. a minute. Well, you know, what, what, songs are like two minutes, so two yeah, to three I minutes. Do half a song. <laughs> We could stretch could, it out. We could do a lot of slow mo. I'm gonna do a, a slow mo, B roll, B -roll yeah. Yeah. and lines. Yeah, two trick lines spread out within yeah. a like a block That's radius. <laughs> wow. I like that. A lot of pushing. Two trick. pushing. <laughs> You just better land it quick. Or you know, like one tired. of those, yeah, yeah. you know, when you do like a nice trick and then you push, 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 and then you do like a tray flip. Yeah. Will you, like slow, down, will you slow down in between pushes? Like put your foot down. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, 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 I that's a do, rough I one. I won't do that. But the toe drag too. Oh, toe, toe drag on flat ground. Yeah. 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 I'll, uh, I'll film you on my rollerblades, Chris. Okay. Yeah. Deal. Deal, Kelly. Yeah. Raj can film you filming me on your rollerblades. Yeah. yeah. I'm big of a whole little segment on this. All huff. No, oh, <laughs> Listen, bro. First of all, pleasure, Huff. Yeah. Congratulations awesome. on everything, all the success. A product's a hell of a game, and you guys are killing it. I love it. What and you said you, you would. You said you would help us do the nine club products. So that's great too. <laughs> that for, would be tight. First dude. of all, <laughs> just. Tell your production, Pete, just... Just come in and just, honestly, just come in and start telling them what to do. Just slow burn it. Just yeah. mention Nine Club, yeah, this yeah. episode will come out, mention it to them again, you know, and then all of a sudden they'll be yeah. designing. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> Here's some stickers for you and a nice mug for your uh, espresso in the morning. I like that. And here's another mug for your espresso in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, there you go. Switch flip Manny mug. <laughs> That switch. Here's a switch. Damage. And here's a long sleeve and a short sleeve Thank shirt. You. I'll wear it with pride. Thank you, nice. bro. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. And you know what? When we get some of our new stuff in, we'll send some to you. Yeah. Or come back and come we'll, raid the warehouse. Yeah. Come yeah. raid the warehouse, man. Where's your warehouse? It's in the other room. <laughs> that bedroom room. over there. <laughs> <laughs> we store all of our stuff too and ship it out. Yeah, we do. Uh, you do it all. We do it all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Whatever you want. We'll need that. We'll it's need all that. free. <laughs> free of charge. Oh, yeah, this we, is yeah. awesome. We appreciate yeah. this. Man, this is fucking great. It's a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> Fulfillment center. Fulfillment center. Yes. And you're the boss. Nobody yeah. to talk to. You, oh, you're yeah. making the decision right now. Yeah. 
Everyone, wants, everyone wants more work. For nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah.